topics, whether conscious or cosmic. It's never nonsense. Mega levels are microscopic. It's a killer priest project. AD control the rocket. Before we land the plane, many things we engage and explain. The unexplained without mass. Welcome to the Killer Priest Podcast. Yeah, yeah. Check one, two. Check one, two. Y'all already know. What's good? What's good? Welcome back. Killer Priest Podcast. Holding it down is your boy A.D. Ross. Until Priest pops on, you know how we do it. Welcome back, yo. It is Wednesday. Yeah. How y'all been? What's new since Monday? Yo, we've got people already in the chat. Jamie Roy, Jimmy B, Freddie Cali, Cartel Williams, Brian Douglas, Chosen Lore. That's a cool name. Godfather 3000. Yeah. Jamai, Peacemaker. Third Eye, Hybrid Cypher is back. Yage Beats. Jack Slane, two eyes. Yo, there's something to be said about all y'all who who join right when we start. Like, we see you. We see the ones that are here right when we start the show. And you know what? We appreciate y'all. Usually we get a lot of latecomers and people who show up late. But you guys were here right at the opening. And I think there's something to be said about that. So that's dope. We appreciate y'all, and, and you know, pre it too, of course. So, uh, yeah, what's going on? Kirk Bang, what's up, what's up? Danny Salinas, Monday's podcast was so dope. Did you like it? Monday's was good, huh? Yeah, yeah, that was the, uh, that was the birthday of Bruce Lee, and, and we spoke a lot about Kung Fu. I think that's very appropriate also. Priest brought on a lot of good videos for us to show. And he's got a lot of good ones to show this time, too. So let me get the Zoom open. Real quick. So that we're ready. But what else is new? Did y'all see that short we just recently uploaded? We just uploaded a short. It basically was Hollow to Dawn um, shouting out Hu Tang Killer Bees, Shaheem, Capadonna, and Killer Priest in one of his bars that he did on Smack URL. It was pretty cool. Um, we we showed that long time ago on the podcast, but ever since shorts came out, it's like, hey, that's a good little clip to put on a short, you know? So we put it out there. But I remember watching that battle. And when he mentioned Killer Priest, I was like, yo, that was dope. Um, but I love battle rap. Hybrid Cypher says, yes. If y'all haven't seen that short, it's on the channel. But it's cool. It's cool. I'm a big fan of Hollow to Dawn. Who's your favorite battle rappers? I, at first, was a huge fan of Sirius Jones. Uh, just seeing seeing him against... Uh, who's the Asian guy? Who was it? Remember? It was like a... It was such a huge controversy. Jin. Sirius Jones versus Jin. When I saw that, bro, oh my gosh. It, it was such a destruction. And Sirius Jones was just killing it. And I remember seeing Sirius against Murder Mook. And Murder Mook is good. Um, I became a fan instantly. I'm like, what is this? This is a whole different type of battling that I'm not used to. You know what I mean? <clears throat> and, you know, things have changed a lot since. Oh, there you go. Loaded Lux is ill. Absolutely. Absolutely. Remember when he was up there in the suit? I think I think he that was versus uh, Hollow to Dawn also when um, Loaded Lux went up there and... and all in a suit, just looking sharp. I think he's done that a few times for a few battles. Party Artie. 
Um, yeah, Organic Beats Production. Thank you. Doing my best, man. Y'all don't mind me. I got a little bit of the sniffles right now. It's like, as much as in the health I am, like, I'm still, like, you get around the wrong people, man. You're going to get the sniffles. Even if you got, like, all your vitamins in check. I eat right. I sleep right. I, I take, you know, all these herbs. I take, you know, uh, what's it called? Uh, CMOS. But then the immune system can get shot sometimes and just, you can, you can catch, you can catch things. Uh, conceited RJ pain. Oh yeah. Pain is ill. I got pain on my Instagram. There's a clip up there. Uh, I put, um, of him killing it. I might, I might just play it. Yeah. Godfather. He said, Jin, yeah. Iron disaster is man. And I can't help but bring up the astrology, but like disaster is a cancer. So, you know, he's like emotional. He's a very emotional type of rapper to where he gets so passionate you know, it's hard to match that. Yeah, Demetrius. Thank you, man. Um, does ramen count as a supplement? Um, I guess for the salt, you're getting some minerals there from the salt. And then you're getting carbs from the actual noodles. Uh, but you're better off having like a chicken noodle soup. Because you want to get that collagen. Do you know what I'm saying? Ramen... You're only getting half of what you need. You really need to get chicken noodle soup. That's what I should be having, to be honest. But, you know, I had my eggs and toast. So, and my orange juice. I'm all about orange juice. So, I'm I'm good. And I took my elderberry and I took my vitamin C. So, I'm not as sick as I could be. You know what I'm saying? I'm just skimming off the sides of being of being ill. I don't consider myself sick, though. Just little sniffles. That's it. I'm good. Jet Life says, I skimmed through Monday's video waiting for KP. I didn't see him, so I didn't watch. <laughs> yeah, he was there. You didn't see Priest? Okay, well, let's see. We've got the Zoom open, so when he joins, he'll join. So, otherwise, we're just going to be talking about ramen and battle rap. Kabbalah says, Jailhouse Ramen. I wouldn't know about that. We got to ask Man Kemper about that. Underland says, I'm vegan and I haven't gotten sick in almost a decade. Wow. That is interesting. I know before these sniffles, I haven't gotten sick in like maybe like 10 months, you know? But I work in an environment where, you know, someone sneezes. I I think I know what happened, yo. And I wasn't trying to talk about this today, but. Okay, so I'm I'm you know y'all know I DJ. So there's a microphone and like I have a popper stopper on there. You know you all know what a popper stopper is. It's that foam uh cover that goes on top of the mic. You know, it's supposed to you know, stop the popping peas, you know what I mean? So and everything. But I use it as like a germ, you know, capture thing for me. I have my own popper stopper. I put my own popper stopper on top of the mic, my own foam thing. And uh, that way it's only my germs. So um, they make us take a half hour break. So <clears throat> Jesus was the dude that was going to cover me on my break so I can take my 30 minute break. So um, he was late. So I was so excited to take my break that when he came in, he's like, he's like, yo, you ready for your break? I'm like, yeah, let's go. I get my water. I get my keys. I'm like, I'm going to my car. You know what I mean? I'm taking my break. I forgot to take off. The popper stopper. So he goes into the DJ booth with his sniffling ass, his sneezing, coughing ass. It wasn't that bad, but I noticed he had something, but I didn't, it didn't register because I was so excited to take my break. Anyway, <clears throat> I come back. I get back to work. I'm on the mic again. And then about 20 minutes in, I'm like, oh, shit. I never took off the popper stopper. That means this dude's germs are on this foam mic protector. So I was like, damn. So I took it off and I switched to my, my. I have one of these, uh, you know, head pieces, head mics at the club too. So I switched from the, from the dynamic mic to this mic, thinking like, well, I was only using that germ, germ thing for 20 minutes. It must have been that, man. I must have got those germs. So... That's how I see it. Be careful when you share microphones. 
You know what I'm saying? That's why I'm kind of iffy about karaoke. Because everyone's drunk. They're passing the mic. And, you know, a lot of people don't know how to hold a mic. So they'll put that mic right up to their lips. And it's like, yo, that's nasty. Uh, not everyone has a microphone technique. Me, I always hold it like an inch away with my finger holding a space between the mic. So you never want your lips to touch the actual mic. But, you know, people think they sound louder when they get real close, you know. Total bad. But you can't teach everybody, you know, mic technique. <clears throat> anyway, long story short, um, that's most likely what happened. But uh, I got the Dake wheel ro rolling, so I'm good. Thank you, man. I feel good. Uh, let's see. Yeah. DJ Sound Daddy, that's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah, I don't I do not do any coke, bro. <laughs> I'm really against drugs. I barely smoke weed anymore. Uh, loose with their biology. Yeah, I feel you too, man. So, And I'm really, like, tight with, you know, make sure everything is clean and, and, you know, germs and everything. I make sure everything is, like, you know, chill. But I just, at the moment, like I said, I forgot to take off my popper stopper. Aloe vera, leaf, lime juice, honey, and one shot of your favorite alcohol, Ben. Wow. Yeah. Does a mic mean public speaking? Yeah, I'd be sick. Yeah. Well, you know, it's a club. It's a club, so it's like, you know, we're putting girls on stage and everything. Here comes Lexi. Um, what do you think of all the UFO sightings? I got to check that out. I was right. Oh, here we go. Coverboy says, Nazi science and technology was taught to them by Ashtar Command. That is why the Nazis wanted a blonde hair, blue eyed race. Uh huh. That is an interesting theory. Hmm. But no, I mean, if I see any kind of UFO stuff, I feel like it's the next card of the Illuminati. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's the next thing is to, do, to fake an alien invasion. I think we're getting set up for Project Bluebeam. I think we're getting set up for them to create a new distraction. And I feel like it's going to happen next year. Conveniently before elections. It's going to be like, they're going to project some hologram in the sky. People are going to trip out. It's going to be all over social media. They're going to be like, look, it's actual proof. And then the government's going to get involved, and they're going to like, we're going to do this and that and this and that. So we're shutting down this and that and blah, blah, blah. They're going to make all these moves based on this holographic thing that's going to look so good that everyone's a believer. And like, the moment I see it, I'm not going to believe it. The moment I see it, I know it's going to be fake. So uh, when I hear about UFO sightings, I immediately say bullshit. 100%. I don't believe in them. Especially when they talk about them coming from uh, other planets. That's how I know for sure it's bullshit. Now, interdimensional beings, okay, I do believe in alternate dimensions. Um, extraterrestrial means from another terrain. So extraterrestrial doesn't necessarily mean from another planet. It could mean from another terrain. Do you know what I'm saying? If you've got beings coming in from another part of this earth from a land that you don't know about that's an extraterrestrial coming from an extra terrain y'all know what i'm saying so extraterrestrial does not necessarily mean from outer space we can't go to space ever you know what i'm saying did you see that video of elon musk trying to go to space again oh, i gotta pull that up David Flores says, salute AD. Salute. What is it? What do I call? Let's see. This one was a new one. I think this oh, that one was four years ago. This one has to be, I think it was last week. No, a year ago. Yo, YouTube, like, 
They filter the heck out of stuff. When I say search by upload date, it starts showing me three months ago. Five months ago. No way. They just launched this thing. There it is. Here it is. Three. Results in another explosion, they call it. It wasn't an explosion. They actually hit the firmament. Watch this. Y'all still looking for proof. Three. You can only go so high. We are T plus 40 seconds into the flight of Starship 33 Raptor engines powering the first stage. Power and telemetry nominal. We've heard power and telemetry nominal call out. We're heading downrange over the Gulf of Mexico. Going straight up. You're not supposed to go straight up. You're supposed to curve like like the Disney logo. You heard that delayed sound? That was kind of cool. Supposed to be curving. It's going up too straight. It's supposed to be curving. That's what the other rockets do. That's what NASA does. NASA knows how to launch a rocket. Elon Musk is just like, let's just go up. Nobody informed Elon. I bet Elon knows that you can't go all the way up. But What's that noise? We're watching uh, SpaceX. Oh, okay, okay. What up, y'all? Separation. What up? You uh, you coming on camera? Yeah, I'm gonna come on camera a little later. I'm just I gotta park. I gotta oh, got park. you. But I got some 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 crazy news. What what you you watching SpaceX? Yeah, uh, we're showing how SpaceX launched the rocket and it hit the dome. Oh, uh, here you go. You 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 brainwashing everybody? Yeah, well, they you? they they brought up UFOs, and the uh, the, the chat room ended up going into going into the boom. Well, how are you going to show them something that's hit the dome? Where's the dome? Is the dome invisible? Is it? I know? mean, it kind of is invisible, but like every time they launch a rocket, they end up hitting it. Right. But anyway, so, that's you the, said there's a dome there, and that we don't see, that we can't touch. You have to prove, show and prove that that dome is really there. Yeah. So, so you have to do that. You have to uh, gather some information. Real quick, I'm gonna get off, but you, uh, f show us where the dome's at, so we can follow you properly. So I showed a video of a rocket trying to go into space, and then mm -hmm. it, it hits the dome and explodes. Is there any report of anybody dying from exploding rockets that hit domes? No, I mean it's it's you set. Should be, you should be able to look that up. They sent a um. They sent. It says right here that. The second Starship flight test results in explosion. So they're sending up flight tests. So they send up drones, basically. But the drones are failing because they're exploding. But okay. what's really happening is that they're you hitting... The people are listening to you. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> it's you all good. Miss. No, I'm, I'm, com people. I'm confident in what I'm saying. I'm I would not do that to the American people. Yeah. No, but you, but you, if, if you could see the, if you could see the screen... You can see the uh, the video I'm showing him. Oh, I can't see it yet. But when I when I um, I got some um, I got some real deep stuff to show the podcast, man. Nice. 
Um, when I get to a spot, I'm driving right now. I'm going. I just I just went through. Um, uh, I was in a Brook. I was in New Jersey, and I took it. I took some photos. It was beautiful with the great Jonathan uh, Manning. So he, you know, he's famous for shooting. Uh, shout out to uh, John Newsom for hooking that up. He shot Jay Z and and Kanye and Biggie. Who else? Kanye. Um. Uh, you know everybody. Yeah, he's famous for doing all of the album covers for uh, mostly Jay Z, and he's out there. He's going to come on the podcast, so he said he would come on, not today, but we're going to set it up properly and have him come on. But you know, just shout out, shout out to him too, because it, it, if he listen, his birthday is coming up. You know, he's in the wonderful uh, what's it, Taurus? What's what's this month? The Sagittarius. Oh yeah, shout out to the Sagittarius. Yeah. You know what I mean? All the sad, all the Sagittarius. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's that's what it is. Well, yes, yeah. sir. Yeah, all right. So finish on with the, the uh rocket hit the dome. Oh yeah, I'm 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 done with that. Is it the dome crack? I don't think is it can double layer dome. I don't think it can crack. I think it's actually uh, like it just becomes like a jelly. When you get there, so you can't like break it, break it, but it's definitely yeah. dense enough to where it can cause an explosion. Cause it's not the first can time. A, can you throw a ninja star in it. I think it would stick. <laughs> you know what I mean? Cause <laughs> it's it's like a dense jelly. So it's dense enough. Yo, it's yo, dense enough for. Crazy, yo. I know, because yo, it, there's there's water know, Vinny, above I it. To Vinny, right, Vinny. Benny said he got some proof. He's tired of all the bull crap. He said the, the earth is square, and he has some proof on it. And because of the ferment, I'm gonna show you some stuff. There's some deep, so so some deep stuff. But when I come out, I wanted to talk about something totally else. So I'm a um, um, you know how everybody said I'm gonna mute out. <laughs> yeah, that's a new. That's a new. I'm gonna back out on mute. Um, I'm gonna come back on. Kick it with y'all. Shout out to I can't even w w watch my phone, but I'll be landed. The eagle will land in a few minutes, and we will go into some deep, deep stuff. But I was going into John Coltrane. Have you heard of him? Yeah. John Coltrane was a master. What he did with music. Yeah. Incredible. Now Alice is his wife. Was his stray wife? She's uh she plays. Yo, she's heavy, yo. Heavy. And the way they hooked up in the spiritual form is incredible because she plays the harp. A lot of people don't know this. I'm talking about incredible. We're going to go into it. We're going to go into it, man. And we went into Bruce Lee the other day. I want to go into another legend, mm. uh, John Coltrane. Okay. You know, Bill Laswell, shout out to him. So we're going you know, into he, he always, Huh? We're going into some no, jazz. Is, yeah, because you always know, talked about, you know, you're a musician, and a lot of people like Bill Laswell, he compared me to him a lot of times. You know, I don't play instruments. With, I, I play a little bit piano, but uh, oh yeah, uh, not like not like the great the great AD. Yeah, but yeah, still, I, I mean, I, little, I didn't know I you played so. We got little thing, thing, We got to get you, you know. on the keys. We got to get you on the keys. But what he did, do you know that John Coltrane played to his fingers bled? No. Yeah, man. You got was like almost. He was almost like possessed. The way he went into the music world, kind of crazy, man. It's deep. I can't heavy, imagine. Heavy, 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 you know how hard stuff. it is to play until your fingers bleed because you would have to. There's no sharp edges on the keys. You're not pushing down that hard. Even if you were, your fingers are pretty strong enough to handle a lot of pressure from just playing the piano to to make them yeah. bleed. Yeah. He was possessed. There would have to be a minor cut off the nail. The nail would have to probably puncture the inside. He'd have to have a hangnail going on. That nail would probably have to go into his skin, and then that would cause further pressure, and then there'd be blood from that. That's the only way I could see that, that he'd have blood from playing the well, keys. You ever, well, you know, in the gospel, you see people sing and catch the Holy Ghost. 
You know what I mean? Catch the Holy, the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. You know, whether you believe it or not, but they go into a trance. And some people, even in um some of the, the tribal, the tribal circles, and people have witnessed some of the tribal uh leaders go into trance where their eyes roll back in their head. Yeah. And they'll be so in tune with what they're doing and what they're saying that they begin to like ohm out, like get in tune with the universe. You know you black out when you make when you make music. And even when you when you play music, I can't really ask you, you know, where's the water or anything, or somebody asks you a question. When you're really in it, you kind of go into a trance because you're communicating with the the universe is communicating through you, and you have a language that you're playing. You're taking these instruments and you're you're connecting us with what you're pressing on. So you yeah. So you you do fall into a a trance. So. His body, maybe he, he had an out, an out of body. Ooh, he had an out of body experience. Hmm. Possibly while he was doing this, because those jazz musicians they play from a lot of pain, and they play from a lot. It's where you where you playing from, and where you where you where you hooking up. That's why when people hear certain people, they know who's real or not. You hmm. can hear DMX voice and know he was real. You know what I'm saying? We was yo dog. It's hard, yeah. He was. It was coming from a place. Tupac came from the belly. Yeah. You know when 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 you have pain, or, or you have anything that you're dealing with when you when you're making music, it's coming from somewhere other than. Some people say you tap in, you tap in, or you you either tap out. Mm-hmm. That's true. So I do believe that that John Coltrane, the um, the myth, the what they say, the mythos, or that he did play. But I know one thing that his woman communicated with him. She still communicated with him through music, yo. Hmm. It's incredible. I want everybody to understand that this music is a transporter. Just like food put you in certain moves or not. So see, you got me over. I don't even want to open up like this yet <laughs> because it ain't that time. But see, you you super me up. That's good. <laughs> you, got, you got this way. That's why we work good together because, you know, like peanut butter jelly, like you, you get me to, to open up a little bit where I can talk because, you know, it's a human, it's a harmony thing, mm. harmony thing when you're in sync. Yeah. Yeah, it's heavy though. It's heavy, man. That's so my, I want everybody to know what you said. That's my moon and Leo connecting with your Leo. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There you go. There you go. That's cool, man. Um, what's they said that that um the lion going to be sleep tonight? Yeah, the lion sleeps in the heart of every warrior. Um, and when he awakens, then you see the then you see the courage, you see the you see the 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 greatness. But man, going back to John Coltrane, brother. Yeah, I mean he blew. They was playing for some, and um, last poets too. I want to talk about the last poets were which were, were great MCs who started rap. You had to watch poets. And these are communicators, man. Certain people can get on the microphone and amplify the realm around you. <laughs> Thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Out of me. Yeah, they can amplify the world, the realm around you. You start feeling like, man, damn, what am I on, drug? No. No, you don't even know what it is. Mike said it was the force. Yeah. The energy. The spiritual is a realm that we communicate. We like it, it it's rhythmic. Mm-hmm. Well, look at the it power of tribal drums. Just with tribal drums alone, they would have in in all cultures. Mm-hmm. Mayan to Hawaiian to to Indian, the native Native American. The, the the drum they would have a tribal drum and there they can they would have man- manifestation ceremonies and you know rain dance and all kinds of things and that's just drums when you that's take right. take it the next level to the uh, to the divine music that's right. and the melodies that's right. thunder yeah right that's right imitating thunder mm. waking awakening up the forest awaking up the surroundings 
and waking up everything that's around you and then getting in tune after you after you're waking up everything and then honing in zeroing in tunnel vision as you see yeah. as they say going in lock it in this jazz thing man and this rap scat whatever they did they would pull it in they were going in and they were they, they didn't even talk just played instruments like you said tribal communication um mm -hmm. yeah man so it's like it's like when I when I get settled bro <laughs> I'm gonna yeah. I'm I'm come back, but you're doing great. But I sent you some videos because I I want to um play. I'll be back on set soon. You know, I'm just enjoying it. And why? Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I was gonna say Whoa. one one of my favorite tracks that you did was Heavy Mental Part Two. Heavy Mental, Heavier Mental. Uh, Heavier Mental. Which one was that? When there was just drums. You did. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You did a video oh, yeah, to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Rocket. Was that Rocket the Devil? Yeah. Yeah. I loved yeah. it because it was just you and drums, and it sounded yeah. so sick. Yeah. Rocket the Devil was the time. Bloody. Yeah. Horrified. When the earth needed, Horrified. they needed to hear. They needed to hear our tone. It, atonement. It needed to hear the tone. The atoning of a voice. You know. People needed healing, and uh, Rocket the Nebula came out of time when it was it was time for that. We talked. I mean, people zeroed in. Never forget that time. It brought people closer. Brought animals out. Do that. Know, that. Fear, the fear. The fear. We, our first show was the fear, but it brought by it brought the love. Right. Yeah, right, I'm gonna call you back. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna zone out. Okay. I'm 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 gonna mute out. <laughs> Yeah. Peace. <laughs> Peace. Out. Yeah, man. That uh that album, Rockets and Nebula, was powerful enough to make Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers post a tweet on Twitter at the time. Crucified, crucified, honorary to the monastery. The gods are ready, no monetary. It's necessary, just bless the berry. Mortuary, walk is heavy, thoughts are deadly. Bloody Mary, bloody Mary, bloody Mary, bloody Mary. Sanctuary tatted on the angel's belly. Face you hairy, label very scary. So ask me in Vatican, pathogen, African, blasphemous, baphomet. Seance and practice the priesthood. Tell time with the abacus. Meditate with the amethyst. Priesthood. The all I see in. Gods and demons, odds and evens, coliseums, mausoleums, monotheism, carbon beings. Devil will tremble, heavier mental. Again. This part. Again. Again. Yeah, blasphemous baphomets. I speak like Pythagoras. Secrets of chariots, soon as the tarot slip. Shows y'all Judas is scary, them Jesus and Nazareth. This season's inhabited. Release all the savages. One knee like I'm Kaepernick. Surrounded by candlesticks. Stay glass and Catholics. And say though as fatals, angels and say those masochists. Found in my rosaries. What I found was my poetry. School in the silence is slowly. Hold up, I must remain balanced and holy. Cause what I rhyme and what I say might trigger my brain to Alice Crowley. I'm a replica Yeshua, born in the nebula, that 51 area of Central America. Heavy mentor, I was Tesla, and Johannes Kepler, with a flow hard to measure. Chrome hearts and leather, you devilish Jesuits, prejudice presence. Yeah. I fly off of the Pegasus, out of my exodus. Man was intelligence, covered with melanin, pointed to the Jacku Stargate. Disciple of Yahweh, with a mind like Tycho Brahe, vivid rhymes get you open like Barclay. Pope said my sins were washed during Pentecost, been to seminars, synagogues, served many gods during Renaissance, prayed in plenty Mars, plan to revisit Mars, the world will tremble, heavier mental. Yo, I love that sound. It's just so raw and so, so tribal. Do you know what I mean? And it it, it just ah, oh, it's like in a six eight pattern. Somebody said Kanye. It sounds like a Kanye track. I know what you're talking about. I know what song you you mean. For this is my theme song. Uh, my leather black jeans on. I know what you're talking about. But yeah. But this one's a little bit more just with the uh, with more of like a tribal kind of sound. Same kind of rhythm, but different instruments. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's so good. That's one of my favorite uh, priest tracks. Um, I could say. 
just because, you know, all of these tracks are going to make you feel a certain way. And, and that one made me feel a certain way. And I had the honor of mixing it, man. So cool. And I went through a few versions that I didn't like. I'm like, no, oh, it's, it's, vocals are too high. I, I didn't want to have the vocals too loud. You know what I'm saying? Some people worry about vocals being too low. I was worried about the vocals being too loud because I wanted those drums to be there. Um, yeah. So it took a while to get everything down, but that was cool. It came out really good. It came out really good. But I love that track. Okay. But yeah, um... It inspires me because it makes me want to make hip hop beats with more of an authentic, almost tribal drum style. Like the good thing about Priest is that he takes you out of the hip hop comfort zone. He takes you out of uh, the norm. Takes you out of the typical hip hop sound that you're used to. And then it literally becomes, not necessarily spoken word, but it becomes... Rhythm and poetry, the, the the way that it was supposed to be. I didn't even mean for that to rhyme. Thank you, fella B. Jimmy B, I'm good. I sniffled. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, let's see. Hybrid Cypher says, tribal, going back to the roots of music. Yeah. John Mai says, the highest act a human can achieve is to inspire. Yeah. And that that's one thing is to stay inspired. It's really easy to become no longer inspired. And you'll wonder like, yo, what happened? How come I'm off course? I'm not as inspired as I used to be. And then that's because a lot of the things that inspire you will only happen acutely. You'll be inspired for a short window of time and you need to re-inspire yourself. That's why the music we listen to now affects how we're going to feel for the next week, the next day, the next hour. This is why we need to maintain a playlist. Keep the tracks that inspire you on rotation. My throat's good, Demetrius. The situation is in my sinus. My throat's good, though. Um, so we got to stay inspired ourselves. Do you know what I mean? I want, for me, some movies that will inspire. Matrix inspires me. Um... Limitless movie inspires me, minus all the the killing that goes on in that. John Wick will inspire me. Fast and Furious movies inspire me. Mostly Fast 9. If you've seen Fast and Furious 9, that's my favorite one. That's my favorite Fast and Furious. Fast and Furious 10, it, it started to turn like a superhero movie, and it looked weird, and I didn't like the villain. The villain's Aquaman. Uh, I wasn't feeling Fast 10, bro. But Fast and Furious 9, Hobbs and Shaw was good. Uh, Fast 9 was my favorite. Besides the first Fast and Furious. The first Fast and Furious was all about racing. That's what I liked. Before they became, you know, agents of the government. Started doing all of these jobs for the government and stuff like that. But I liked the first Fast and Furious and then Fast and Furious 9. And ironically, Fast and Furious 8 was the one that got the most sales. They did over a billion dollars with Fast 8. That was their biggest one. The one with the submarine. Anyway, I went on a tangent. I couldn't get past the first. Yeah, the first one's good. But everything changes. after Once you hit 2, Tokyo Drift, and then they all start to connect... You have to watch each one because if you miss one, then uh, the, the bad guys in other parts aren't going to make sense. Like, who's this guy? Oh, you didn't see part four. You know what I mean? Or in Fast and Furious 9, who's this guy? Oh, you didn't see part seven. So you've got to see each one in order. And then after Fast and Furious 9, you have to watch Hobbs Shaw and then 10. 10 is good, but it's just so ridiculous. Like... I don't know. Uh, what y'all think? I'll binge watch in all in my older years. 
<laughs> haven't seen a since. Last fast I've seen was six. Uh, when I go to a NASCAR event, uh, as much as I love Fast and Furious, I'm not really into the to the the NASCAR. You know, it's like anything. Like, you know, how are you gonna pick a favorite if you don't have any relation to any specific driver? How are you gonna pick a favorite? Oh, I like blue. I hope the blue car wins. Like, what's the point? You know, I I, I can't get into it. It's not my thing. But I'm not into certain sports. You know, I like boxing when Mayweather was around. <laughs> uh, thank you, Rakib. Okay, uh, I can't answer that, Cover Boy. I, I don't know. That that's getting a little political. I I really I don't even want to say your comment. Uh, back out. I don't even want to say anything. Uh, Hybrid Cipher. I have the the Too Fast Too Furious poster on my wall. And it's been there since it came out. Nice. That was good. I know everything kind of it sucked when that guy died in real life. You know what I mean? Paul. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Yeah, but they're they're still good, Jamai. They're still pretty good. Um, but yeah, just nine is my favorite. It's just hilarious, and it's got Ludacris in it, and Ludacris is funny, and it's got uh, Tyrese. Ty Tyrese is hilarious in the in these movies, man. I just love it. I love the feel of it all. You know, and then The Rock comes in. You know, The Rock and Tyrese, they really did not get along. I don't know if you'll know about that. The Rock and Tyrese did not get along. And then when Fast and Furious 9 came out, Tyrese was like, I'm not working with, with uh, Dwayne Johnson again. If you bring him back Dwayne Johnson, I'm out. It was that bad. But it's funny because in the movie, they're fighting. Like in the movie, they talk shit to each other. They they make fun of each other in the movie. It's hilarious, and in, I guess in real life they also didn't get along. So it's like, it's just so it's just so funny. Um, but uh, so in Fast Nine they brought in the other the other wrestler John Cena. So you see John Cena in Part Nine. So I don't know if that beef was the reason why they didn't bring back The Rock. Maybe The Rock was doing something else. The Rock is doing so many movies, so maybe he was busy. Yeah. John Mai, that's what I'm talking about. The one where Luda and and uh, and Tyrese are in space. Was it for me? It was so funny, though, man. They do a good job. They got a good chemistry, too. Ludacris and Tyrese have a good chemistry. Um, but the writing was good. I liked the writing in that movie, and then the cinematography. It, it, you were you're never bored, man. It just kept moving and moving. Not dull moments, you know. Like I I get it. They show Vin Diesel. It's all about family. It's about family. Like that's cool. That's got to have some heart in the movie. Um, I like it for its its uh, its ability to to stay the type of movie that we expect. You know what I mean? It's a little cliche. You know, sometimes we want cliche, you know, it delivered on what I wanted with the action. I want to see fast cars. I want to see shooting. I want to see technology and it delivered on all that in a, in a fun way. So it delivered what I wanted for myself personally. I liked it. So, but what, how do we get to this topic? We're talking about ins inspiration. What inspires you? Um, we talked about the Kung Fu movies on Monday. Kung Fu movies were inspirational to a lot of people, too. Um, what movies inspired you guys? Let's, let's throw it back out to you guys in the chat. Put in the chat what movies, specifically, inspire you in general, or get you pumped up, or, or give you, um, I don't know, a sense of meaning. What, what, what movies get you excited? What movies have an impact, give you an impact, make you emotionally bounce up? Go ahead. Bloodsport. 
Goonies. <laughs> Oh, Jamai, you're going to make me get my sound effects out. Did y'all see what Jamai posted? I believe I can fly. The Warriors and Clueless. <laughs> Cover boy. Man, that's when uh, Alicia Silverstone was hot. She was hot back then, man. I was like, damn. I remember being all about her when she was young. She had this look on her face that was just so like, yeah. Hold on, I put I gotta put young. Bro. She used to be on point. She was gorgeous back then. Used to love Alicia Silverstone. And then, you know, time and, you know, life takes a turn and things just, things just ain't the same. When you get older, not for everybody, for some people, you know, and it's like, that's you. Hey, it is what it is. I ain't hating. It's just, uh, you know, some people look a certain way when they're young and they look a certain way when they're older. Ain't nothing wrong with that. They said the same thing about the girl from Top Gun. You know, I'm not going to pull it up, but uh, you remember the girl on Top Gun, the first one? She was a hot girl back then, but they couldn't bring her back for the second one, you know? But then there's some girls that they're just banging their whole life, you know? Coverboy says Libra vibes. Oh, you getting into astrology now, Coverboy? Let's see what uh, October 4th. Yeah. Yeah, you know, right? Elsa Smith, she's not old, technically. 1976. She's in her late 40s. You know? But, like, I don't know if she has kids. I don't know. You go through stuff in life, you have kids. I don't know. It's going to make, it's going to have an adjustment on you. How do we get to that point? I don't know. Okay, what did I say? Uh, people are beautiful on the inside, AD. That's right. That's what I'm trying to say. How did we get to Elisa Silverstone? I forgot. Okay, so what movies inspired y'all? I'm going to go back up here. Sorry, I went on a tangent. Uh, Style Wars, City of God, Return of the Jedi. Planet of the Apes. Return of the Jedi is a good one. Life of Brian. Huh. Last Samurai, Braveheart, Witcher. Yo, my dad loved Braveheart, man. We went to the movies and saw that so many times. I was just a kid and I was like being dragged to that movie and I'm like, I don't want to see this again. And then once he got the... Uh, Back then it was VHS. Once he got the VHS, he was playing Braveheart again. It's like, yo. Um, Planet of the Apes, Good Will Hunting. City of God is my favorite movie. I can't watch it too much, though, because it's so sad. Apocalypse Now, Iron Sky, Masters of the Universe. Huh. I got a handful of movies done the knowledge to and not, I think. Terminator. Yeah. 
Part one or part two or both? Because after part two, like the other ones just couldn't compare. It was kind of cool seeing that hot female Terminator though. On part what three or four? Austin Powers, baby. The boy who shocked me. Something about those Mike Myers films, man. S.L.F. says he follows Alicia Silverstone on the gram. Right on. Full Metal Jacket. Top Gun. No Country for Old Men. Buster Keaton clips. Snow Bunnies. What the hell is, what the hell is a Snow Bunny? I don't know what he's talking about. What's this snow bunny? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, you mean like... Oh, okay. Oh, damn. That's what you're talking about. Hmm. Vegan Alicia. Is she vegan? Oh, shit. Well, she's a Libra. They are known for... You know, being all about saving the animals and the environment. In fact, one of the Libras that I know is a vegan. She's beautiful, though. In 1998, Silverstone went vegan after learning about the gruesome realities of animal agriculture. Yeah, that's such a Libra thing to say. A move that she later learned came with environmental benefits, too. So before, when she was hot, she wasn't vegan. Oh, no, I'm not going to talk shit. Oh, okay. She went completely vegan in 1998 when she was 21. I mean, I'm not against vegetarianism because you're still able to get milk and eggs if you're lacto-ovo. To each his own. Um, it's a controversial topic. A lot of the spiritual people that I follow, you know, I'm really into obviously the the red pill stuff and and um, all of this spiritual stuff, the kundalini, the, you know, raising your frequency, raising your vibration. So I'm following all of these gurus, and it just so happens many of them are vegan or they're fruit fruitarians and all that stuff. So it's like. You know, I watch them, I listen to them, I, 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 I understand, you know, the meditation, I understand raising the kundalini, the vibration and all that and stuff. But when they talk about the veganism stuff, I kind of just like, eh, overlook that because I have conflicting, and you know, I also study nutrition through these other gurus, you know, but diet is a whole topic in its own and in veganism, it can be uh, become very religious in itself. Some people say veganism is a religion in itself too. So um, it just depends because there's the moral aspect, which is like you shouldn't kill animals. And then there's the health aspect, which is, you know, we need all of these certain, you know, elements. So it's best just to say, it's best just to stay impartial. At least on a podcast. Boom. Equilibrium is a dope movie. That's what uh, Knowledge Born was talking about. Equilibrium. Huh. I might check that out today. Because that's the one that Knowledge Born brought up and I haven't seen it yet. AD uses the word guru a lot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see, what says Alex Jones selling them seeds. People that eat meat more so value power. Huh. Must make meals taste better. AD uses the word. Uh, let's see. Veganism is for self-transcendence. I mean, I could talk about it, but I don't think we should go into it now. It would be best if someone else was here 
to oppose me, and then we would go back and forth. Do you know what I mean? It wouldn't be fair for me to just sit here and say all the great things about, you know, um, an animal-based diet. Or, or or being an omnivore, I should say. Not completely animal-based, but like one that eats all things, you know? So I don't want to go into it now because, especially for the sake of the podcast and the show, it would be best, like I said, to have someone else here to that disagrees with me so we would go back and forth. Because then that would, that would make for an interesting show, you know? And it would go back and forth. They say their point. I say my point. And it wouldn't be a debate. It would just be a discussion. And that's what we want to do. That's what we want to have. So we'll leave that for another time. Right now, we're just shooting the shit in the chat room. Uh, Coverboy, you got to be nice, bro. She's a nice girl. Eye to eye. Blind Fury is a dope movie, too. The guy who was blind. Clash of the Titans. We're talking about movies. How many of y'all saw Captain EO? It was at Disneyland back in the day. And in Florida, it was, on, it was at their Disneyland also. That inspired me a lot, too. It was just... It was silly, but Michael Jackson just had a way of making music his superpower. It was his superpower. Michael Jackson was a superhero, in my mind. You know? And if you see Captain Neo... It's the real life documentary portrayal of metaphorically Michael Jackson in this world who's doing what he has to do, following orders. And as he's following orders, he has to present a gift. And he presents this gift to this witch lady, but tells her that she's beautiful. He's getting fought. He's fighting her henchmen. He beats the henchmen. He shoots his powerful rays of light and music at her it brings out her beauty he saves he saves her he saves that whole element he's here to save the world the music was great um i remember seeing that as a kid and you know i didn't see it as the philosophical way i'm saying it now but back then it was like powerful but i like captain eo that's a thing that inspired me it was a short film uh, MB says that ride was simulated into the movie was cool. Yeah. Um, another part of me. Yeah, that was actually in the bad album. We are here to change the world. I think was specifically for that movie. Um, that's a cover from another song from another person who's who's saying that. We are here to change the world. <clears throat> So it was featured in Captain EO. But. What? That was also in the Bad Album? No. Oh, unreleased. So it was supposed to be in the Bad Album. Okay. Um, yeah. So it was unreleased, but it was meant to be on the bad album. Dude, such a powerful song, man. They did not want Michael Jackson... To heal the world. Remember he had that song called Heal the World, Make It a Better Place? Dude, Michael Jackson was literally saving the world. His music was so powerful. It was bringing such an energy. That's why they tried to bring him down, bro. That's why they tried to uh, pull Michael Jackson down. That's why they, they, that's why they did what they did to him. Because he was, he was more powerful than the president. He was more powerful than, than anybody on, on, in the world. He he had that much more impact. People were willing to listen to Michael Jackson over anybody. He was a superhero. I kind of think he's still alive, but I'm not going to go into that now. That's some, some conspiracy stuff, but uh, I think he's still alive. 
But yeah. That's a great song. Um, if you guys are ever in Las Vegas, check out the Michael Jackson. Is it still there? Check out the Michael Jackson uh, show. MJ Live. One by Cirque de Soleil. Wow, it's still going. Yo, it is. This thing is still happening. They still have the Michael Jackson show in Las Vegas, and I've seen it once, and it was amazing. The thing that was kind of weird for me was that I didn't recognize every song. Like, they really go into his catalog, and they play songs from Michael Jackson that you may not have even heard before, and... I don't know. I was impressed. So what happened was there's like a main Michael Jackson in every show. In the performance, there's one dude that is the most closest thing that they have to their Michael. And he's the most accurate depiction of Michael. And they bring him out at certain times. Everyone else is like a backup dancer that is dancing like Michael. You know? But it was a really good show. But... Is it worth it? Yes. I highly recommend it. It's kind of a long show, as most of the uh, plays are. So do not, don't load up on alcohol and drinks before the show. Because if you have to pee, you're stuck in there. Like, it's really hard to get out of your seat and go pee. Um, so make sure you use the bathroom before you watch the show. Because, I mean, you don't even want to leave. When the show's going on. But it sounds incredible. The sound system's good. Um, have any of you in the chat seen this? <laughs> AD, are you okay? Are you okay, AD? Um, yeah. So check that out. It's definitely worth it. If you're in Vegas, go see the Michael Jackson live show. 100%. In fact, if I ever go out there again, I want to see it again. I only got to see it once. Um, sorry for all the tangents, yo. Michael knew way too much. They wanted him gone. Yo, you know he was studying stem cell research in Baghdad to extend his life. He was learning how to live longer. He was looking in. A lot of people who are that elite, they look into stuff like immortality. And they're really, and you know, um, I wish Tahuti, Tahuti touched on this a little bit when he was here. But obviously the Egyptians were really into like living to 300 years old, 400 years old. Like there's ancient sciences all connected to that stuff. It's high level, obviously. But Michael Jackson was looking into that stuff. And he wanted to extend his life. Which is part of the reason why I think he's still alive. But, um... I don't want to get into it. I feel like it'd be better to discuss that with Priest here. So I'll wait for Priest to be here before I talk about Michael Jackson still being alive. Um, oh yeah, Man in the Mirror. How powerful was Man in the Mirror? It was, that was like, it brought in some gospel, you know? You guys know how uh, powerful gospel is. When Michael Jackson had Man in the Mirror, that was a powerful song too. But yo, he was literally healing the world, and they didn't want that. They don't want high frequency, because then they can't control high frequency. Okay, where are we at here? How many of y'all did play the Moonwalker game on Genesis? How many of y'all played that? I know y'all did. Hit the chat room if y'all did that. Michael easily could have lived to 110. 110, yeah, but I think he was learning to go beyond that. You know? What if he's on an island somewhere? He had that kind of money. Uh, 
that Michael documentary was the f- fakest thing I've ever seen. People smile when they lie. And they were smiling when they talked about what happened with Michael. They wanted to get a check off his name. Okay. Or were they smiling because they knew that they that he's still alive? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, think about it. Were they smiling? You're right that people smile when they lie. Were they lying because they knew he was still alive? That's what I'm saying. Um, I don't know, Demetrius. I don't know what Bro Sanchez's opinion is on this. I haven't heard... Bro Sanchez talk about Michael. Coverboy says, man, I did not have MJ Moonwalker game. I had the Prince. Vi- There's no Prince video game. This game was dope. Oh, wait, that's the real song. Can't play that. Yeah. So did y'all play this? I I played the whole game, passed the whole game. It was fun. And then once you got to a point when you had way too many people on you, you did this spin, and everybody would be dancing. I don't know if he's going to do it right here. <clears throat> wow, we still got we got more people in the craft. Um, he said, my bad, I had Tito Jackson. <laughs> Cover boy is playing. Um... Hold on a second. Okay. Jane Roy. That's memories. Check my super chat. What's the OG version of that game called? Uh, Moonwalker. Okay. Throwback. Underland. So you did play it. 80. Wait. Why is MJ saving blonde hair Nordic babe from being transported and organ? I think that's... uh. I think that's supposed to be Annie, right? Isn't that the whole thing? Annie, are you okay? Um, Okay, hold on. Let me check the super chat. Oh, no. Okay. Can you show the craft Alex Jones video game trailer? I don't know if I should show that, bro. You know, it's... I don't think this is the demographic. Or I should say target audience for that. It is funny. But it's controversial. But... um. I'm going to wait for Priest on that. I don't want to just show stuff. You know, especially when that, because it's political. It it, it may bring harm to the channel. It's that controversial that we can't show an Alex Jones video game. Yeah. Uh, If you guys want to check that out, check that out. But I would need to show Priest first, get his permission, and then I'd show that because, bro... The way YouTube works, the way this system works, the way the Matrix works. Also for the sake of the audience, I don't know. <clears throat> um, but salute to you all. Um, shout out to Danny Salinas. Uh, for you all at home, he says, check out that Alex Jones video game trailer. I'm hesitant to show it because... 
it's got a lot of controversial things going on in there. You know, a lot of suggesting things. So, a lot of you guys already know about it. If you don't, go ahead and check it out on your own time. But once you see it, you'll see why I was hesitant to play it. Let's just leave it at that. I'd rather play it safe, y'all. <clears throat> I'd rather just play it safe. And it's not, Alex Jones is not Bill Hicks. <laughs> Like, I know people who know Alex Jones. We have uh, a common producer. I work with one of his producers. Uh, when I did, I did a, uh, I did the graphics for a documentary for a cannabis company uh, called American Drug War II. Cannabis Destiny. So, I did the graphics for this company here, for this. And this is actually my graphic right there. You see this with these people, and they're holding up a plant? You see all that? That is, okay. That is work by your boy AD. <clears throat> it's just some Photoshop manipulation. And then I put the uh, the logo together. Cannabis Destiny 2. I did part two. I did not do part one. But I did the graphics for this uh, film. And it has Alex Jones in it. And they talk about the uh, war on drugs. It came out a while ago. Um, 2014. Yeah. And the director was the guy that I knew personally. And he's the one that had me uh, do the graphics. I also did some of the um, video graphics on the on the documentary itself. Anyway, he's the one that know. Oh, there he is, Kevin Booth. So I know Kevin Booth. Uh, cool dude. Kevin Booth is cool. He's uh he's a director. He knows Alex Jones personally too. And uh, if we really wanted to get Alex on the show, we could. The question is, all because we can doesn't mean we should. You know? A lot of controversy there. We already had... We already had uh, the one that gave us the uh, our first strike. Well, my memory's shot. I didn't even smoke weed. Rumble. Here comes the damn cat. Wanting attention. You know what I'm talking about. David Icke. We already had David Icke on the show. What he spoke about gave us our first strike. And it, when you get up your first strike on YouTube, it's not a strike strike. It's a warning. It's a warning for your first strike. So not only did they take out that whole video, luckily I downloaded it, and then I edited it and re-uploaded it, and also put the uncensored version on Rumble, but um, they gave us a warning, and the warning stays up there for like a year. It's still up there now. Um, so, yeah, you guys see it. Ike, yeah, you guys are ahead of me. David Ike. Alex is the type of guy to open to all channels. Yeah. You know, it's funny how right he is about a lot of stuff, though. Admiral Byrd is not with us anymore. They, uh... They had to eliminate him, if you know what I mean. You can look into that. He said too much. So you can't say too much. Shout out to Knowledge Born setting everybody up for the uh, song promotion segment that we're going to do tonight. Coverboy says, man, at AD, ask KP if the Coverboy go live. Um, oh, shit. 512. Hold on. I got to send Priest the link.
I, I, I said, there's nothing wrong with being sober. It's a thing. I encourage it. Yeah. I just don't think it's good to smoke when you, um, when you have a cold or a potential cough. I think like it's good to keep the airwaves clear. You know, I feel like the body is already trying to do its thing that if you bring in cannabis or anything else, it's, it just makes it harder. I don't know. I could be wrong. Uh, but there's a lot of benefits to cannabis. I'm for it, but at the right time, timing is everything. The, uh, the devil is in the dosage. You got to know how much and when. So I think if you, if you, if you're able to take account your timing and your dosage, it could be very beneficial to you. Like if I'm going to write something or if I'm going to, um, if I'm going to, uh, write lyrics, then I'll be for it. But if I'm just going to go to the store, smoking weed is not a good idea. You're going to end up buying things at the store you're not, you shouldn't be eating. Straight up. Because cannabis will give you this effort mentality. You'll go to the store and be, effort, I'm getting this. Effort, I'm going to get this. Effort, I'm going to get this. Ain't nobody can stop me. This is my life. It makes you so... It, it turns you into a superhero in your own mind. You know what I mean? Cannabis can be dangerous in that respect. It just it, it gives you too much mental power, too much of a mentality. that It, it gives you the effort mentality. You feel invincible in many ways. At least the weed that I smoke. I smoke a sativa hybrid. Sativa dominant hybrid. I to I says, I'm an alcoholic and that shit is way worse than being a pothead. That's absolutely true. Alcohol is, is just, it's like a, it's toxic, you know? And I get it. There's benefits to red wine, you know, after you eat a steak or something like that. You know, there's, it's supposed to be good for the mind because it clears out dead brain cells and makes room for new brain cells. There's something about um, red wine that... I forgot what the element is in there, but it's supposed to be good for the blood cells. But that's red wine. If you're drinking tequila and all that hard stuff, um, you know, you're making it hard on your liver. And your liver has a, a tough job as is. Oni says, 80 cannabis only plant on earth that has everything humans need to live. Yeah, that's true. Uh, we have in our, our bodies called the endocannabinoid system. A system in our body that literally has the word cannabis in it. So we are supposed to be getting some of it. And I tell you, when I do smoke, I'll feel like back to normal. Like, yo, everything seems to be functioning again. And I'm able to get to work. I'm able to get a lot of things done when I smoke. And I don't mean just creatively, but I'm like efficiently doing the dishes, efficiently getting the laundry done, efficiently mopping the floor, efficiently taking out the kitty litter, efficiently just... Just getting things done, boom, while I'm on a nice level of cannabis. Of course, you can overdo it and then you're on the couch, but that's, that's that indica. You got to see what works for you. Some people, indica makes them height and sativa brings them down. Me, I'm the standard. Sativa makes me height, indica brings me down. So I, I don't really smoke indica. Most girls love indica. You know, but a lot of dudes like indica too. Um, Snoop Dogg is a big indica smoker. I don't know what Be Real prefers. It'd be cool to have Be Real on the show. I'd like to ask Be Real what he prefers. Uh oh, Priest just sent me something. Priest just sent me this. Hey, is that a photo shoot? He says, read it. Okay. There's Priest and Solomon. Looks like they're doing a photo shoot. He just sent that to me. Nice. Last minute.
Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see if we get back on. Where we at? Alcoholics Anonymous Podcast. Yeah, I, I try to stay away from the alcohol. It, it's easy for me now. One of my ins, uh, inspirations, as y'all know, is Floyd Mayweather. Floyd didn't smoke or drink. Or he still doesn't do that. He doesn't smoke or drink. And seeing how focused he is as a person, if you watch um, Mayweather uh, talking in interviews, I also relate to him because he's a Pisces like me. So, like, um, I like seeing how he would be very focused and be, like, not about alcohol or anything. And um, that was one of the reasons why I was able to stay off alcohol. And it's crazy because pe most Pisces... We have an uh, we have addictive personalities, so we're very likely to get addicted to things. So that's why they say don't drink like a fish. And Pisces are fish. So uh, many Pisces you'll know that are not conscious, they're likely to fall into drugs or alcohol. But the ones that are conscious uh, know to stay away. Um, but for me, my addictive thing was weed. But when weed got so damn strong as it is now. Now I just smoke when I absolutely need it. And I, I respect it as a medicine. Because it's so damn strong, I can't smoke every day. Nah. Hanzo says, sorry, I'm tuning in late. Did y'all see the Larry King interview with Dave Dave? Everyone in the comments thinks Dave Dave is actually MJ in disguise. Let's check it out. I think I know what you're talking about. You look like a mummy, kind of. Oh. Yeah. Yo. These are channels that know that Mike's real. I, like, Mike's still alive. I believe what, what people fail to realize is that Michael was a human being. Um... Throughout the years, I think he was kind of stigma stigmatized. By and I entered an arcade, and there were all these Paul McCartney records all over this. The girl is mine, and, you know, this and that. And I remember sitting down, and at the time... After this all happened, why? About two years ago, I changed it legally to Dave Dave uh, to liberate myself uh, from my father and to establish myself as an artist. It was kind of like an artistic decision to, to do that. And a lot of people... Oh wait, but it shows you who the original Dave Dave was. Um... No, I think that's... And look, as much as I believe that Mike's re, uh, alive, this one, I feel, was actually that dude. Is, is that Michael was a human being? No, I think that's... Look, I'm all for believing Mike's, uh, Mike is still alive, but I think that's the actual... Day, which looks like he's been through some burns, right? I don't know the history behind this person. But, um, yeah, no, I don't, I don't believe that Dave Dave is MJ. Wow. But they have so many videos about this. According to the records, the Dave Dave incident is the greatest evidence that Michael Jackson is alive. After this incident, millions of Michael Jackson fans began to believe that Michael Jackson was alive. We will examine the background of this crazy act of Michael Jackson. Today, as we examine the tragic and message filled story behind Michael Jackson's Dave Dave disguise, we will talk about Dave Dave's painful life. Then. No, 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 no. I don't believe that's the. I, no, there'd be no reason for him to uh, fake that. See, that's where some conspiracies will go. Awry, but uh, I get it. I get it. I think he's still alive, but I think that was the regular Dave. Dave. 
Okay. Jody says, yeah, he was burned. Because it wouldn't make sense for MJ to, to be in disguise, you know? I, I says, I'm not a heavy smoker. I just smoke alone. But yeah, it's like you got to go with what works for you. You know, at the end of the day, it's a lot better than any type of the prescription pills they have out there. The whole point is to stay away from pharmaceuticals. And cannabis nicely replaces many pharmaceuticals. A lot of them. You know. Uh, Hybrid Cypher says, I'm such be real. Oh, I'm sure be real would come on that show. Me and Jimmy hollering and hooting that on Discord. Um, yeah, because Priest obviously was on Be Real's show. And Priest has Be Real on his phone, so they just need to hook that up. And we're right next to um, his smoke shop, Dr. Green Thumbs. That's down the street. Um, so, yeah, I'm sure they could hook that up. Cover boy, you're crazy. Christopher Alexander, hey, how can I ask to get a seat on the podcast? I would email um, priest at info at killerpriest.tv. And just send him an email, tell him who you are, tell him what you want to talk about. Yeah, Underland, I'm with you. I don't, I don't think Dave Dave is MJ. But I think MJ um, went to an island somewhere. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Cap. Uh, James Roy KP on LSD is extra. What? Was it Cypress Hill on an old podcast show? Uh, yeah, Priest was on a um Dr. Green Thumb uh podcast. Y'all see it. I think I posted a clip on Priest Channel. Yeah. Did you play Ready to Rumble video game? No. I played Tyson's Punch Out. Huh. Afro Thunder. From Toronto, Canada, and weighing in at 128 pounds, the hyper guy, <laughs> Freaky D. What? Ladies and that sounds like the actual voice. Wow. No, what I did though play was uh Vendetta. Wait, not that one. There it is. Def Jam. Yeah. Did y'all play that? You could be Keith Murray. You could be Capone. How many of y'all played this? Oh, that's all the characters. We're organized. How many of y'all play this game? This game was ill. You could be a red man. Snoop Dogg was the final boss? What? I didn't play that far. Uh, 
Oh, that's Method Man. There you go. That's Red Man versus Capone. That's great, man. It's been a minute since I played that. <clears throat> Look at that, Ludacris versus Nore. You ready for this? Better pack your bags, punk. Hey, y'all, y'all ready to kick this off the knob to me? I love it. Yo, I'll be right back. I got to blow my nose. That's dope. That was fun, man. I haven't been doing any video games in a long time, man. The last games I was playing was uh, Call of Duty. And then all these upgrades started happening, and Call of Duty just became different. Like, it, came, it became way harder. And uh, just not that exciting anymore. So I got to a point, luckily, where I'm like, I'm good. I'm done. So, um, I don't play Call of Duty anymore, which I'm glad because as fun as it was, like, it just took me away from my, um, productive time. So now it's like no video games, man. Try to just stay focused. Okay, we're back. Sorry about that. I had to go, uh, handle some things. Yeah, I had to. S.L. Smith knows what's up. I'm good now. Yeah. Christopher Alexander, I make videos, I rap, I do kung fu, I study medicinal plants, I'm an esoteric knowledge type. I'm pretty hood out cheer. I can't say much more or I may violate probate. Okay, that's what's up. Christopher Alexander. Shout out. Jamai. Uh, Raina Lusted. The only games I played, Space Invaders and Donkey Kong. Man. Sir Lincoln says, fuck all that gaming shit. Let's talk listening to KP on the best drugs, man. Trinidad in the house. I'm the cook up for real. Hell yeah. What's up, Lincoln? Sir Lincoln in the house. Yo, you guys are cool, man. Yeah. I mean, I had to put the gaming shit on just so I could dip real quick. Uh, Hybrid Cypher says, yeah, definitely. You guys should do more collabs with Be Real for sure. You have the same fan base and your shows are never on the same time. You've even had guests go from one show to the other on one night. Huh. Oh, wait, Christopher Alexander says, wait, I just got off probation today. Congratulations, Christopher Alexander. 
Uh, Jimmy B, I can't believe this came out 20. Wow, is that 21 years ago? Damn. I, I says I play Rocket League in PUBG. Uh, oh boy, Jemai, man, they was throwing hands. Call of Duty is like an army recruitment tool. Yeah, probably. I was just over it. Once you get sniped a few times, you're just like, all right. Oh, Priest just sent me. Oh, he's backstage. Where? Hold on. Okay, hold on. Where did the... Where did my Zoom thing go? Hold on. I got priest coming in. But my Zoom's tripping. Here we go. Okay. Okay, ready. All right, priest coming soon. Yeah, yeah, sharing sound. Okay. Priest is sharing a pic. <clears throat> um Yeah, Jemai, I am. So did you ever pursue a career of film composer? Yeah, so that's my main like endeavor. Um I have a website called adrossmusic.com and that is me pursuing the film scoring thing. So I've got one credit under my belt. Um uh, I did one film soundtrack. Hold on. Okay, I'm confirming with Priest. I have one film soundtrack that I did when I was in college for a movie called For Them. And it went on the Sundance Film Festival. It was a short. <clears throat> and so I am on IMDb as a composer. So this is the film. It was in 2005. Um, it was about this girl that was being abused by her brother. And uh, as you scroll down, you'll see, let's see, technical specs. Yep. Storyline, cast and crew. There you go. You'll see music by your boy, Adrian Ross. So that's my full name. Like I said, I go by AD so that people don't give me the Rocky reference. Hey, yo, Adrian. But um, I'm in there as Adrian Ross the third because there's two other Adrian Rosses. And um, another reason why I changed the name. But that is the one film score that I did um, for a movie. I want to do more, and I'm going to do more. And this is one of my credits. You hear that? That's my composition. Like a little cool vibe. Anyway, the the it's, the movie's like twelve minutes. You can see it online. 
It's going to be on my portfolio. But that's the one movie I did. <clears throat> and I'm looking to do a lot more. Um, but ever since I met Priest, it was like, I dropped a lot of projects just to work with Priest, which was great because there was so much happening. And uh, <clears throat> I'm excited about that. Now I want to do movie soundtracks for Priest. Do you know what I mean? Give Priest some movie soundtrack type stuff and let him do what he does if he chooses to, you know? So uh, so that that's that's the ultimate thing is to do movie soundtracks. And then, you know, I, I was like, well, I got to tear up the keys a little bit. So, you know, I recorded myself playing uh, Pirates of the Caribbean just so I can, like, Show some of my chops. You know. So I'm here playing the keys, doing movie soundtrack stuff. <clears throat> Watch this. This is the heavy, this is the hardest part right here. Oh, hold on. We got Priest joining. Anyway, y'all can see that online. But, uh, yeah, I loved the uh, film soundtracks. I loved Hans Zimmer and Danny Elfman. Those are my main... Um, yo, yo. Yo, yo. Back in the building. Yeah. I had to get, I had to get settled, man. My bad. Was no. <clears throat> hey, it's all good. <laughs> Um, we we're talking about video games. We we're talking about life. I heard something about video games too. Movie soundtracks. Word. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I had something about. I was gonna um, I was gonna go into um when the, when the video games had first came out. Mm. I have a you know, you know, researcher that I am. <laughs> mm -hmm. I found some good stuff on Space Invaders. How, how it took over. And I took over to have um this old joint. Pardon me. Let me get myself together. Man. Yeah. You heard that? <laughs> yeah. Sound like a rip, right? No, we didn't hear anything. Oh, good. Um, <laughs> it was, this whole tight. We gonna get it. Uh, I think yeah. that I think there's a noise gate. What? A noise gate. You know what a noise gate is? It's like, I think so. Zoom has a noise gate. It only will pick up loud, loud frequencies. Any background stuff, it suppresses. Oh, okay. So we didn't, we didn't hear any rips. I'm glad. Okay. <laughs> what? Oh, 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 it was cut off. <laughs> hey, it's, all, it's all good. Huh? If the Zoom cut off, please refer. Just wait for 15 minutes. Oh. Um, then it's charging. But what I was saying, what you said now, you, 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 you had something to do with Star Video Games? Yeah, we had talked about uh, Def Jam Vendetta. We talked about Call of Duty for a minute. Um... Then we got into movie soundtracks. My, we talked about Michael Jackson earlier. Uh, saying Michael Jackson's still alive. <clears throat> pretty much. If, we, if anybody would pull that off. Yeah. Probably get right? Pull that off. Yeah. That's what you I was saying. Pull that off. Yeah, this, but yo, it's hard to beat this system, man. Yeah. This system. See, that nigga's... I mean, pardon me, y'all. He said, they don't really care about us. Yeah. I have a man singing that. And he did all these shows and did so much for the public. I mean, he put gen generations to school. Yeah. Generations to, I mean, generations of people through school. And then you get on there and say, all y'all want to do is talk about behind my back. They don't care. They will fight back you. They will destroy you. you know when you're a creator like that you on hope you you on a whole different level mm -hmm. than everybody else and you see further than people you know other people can see you gotta watch your back 
because they'll come with drugs. They come, I remember RZA asking, Yo, why are so many artists are poisoned with drugs and what they do to us? You know? Yeah. And they come with the they come with the game. Because really you just a, they want they want you to be a sacrifice with your talent that you got from the most high for the universe. When the universe and all the powers instills inside of you, you are that nucleus that's making everything run. You know, Bruce, everything was great. That's why I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it back to John Coltrane. But everything was great. Everything was great with the world. Martial art was martial arts. And then the guy named was was born named Bruce Lee, who changed the game. Boxing was great. It, it 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 generated money. But then a person was born named Sugar Ray Robinson, then later Muhammad Ali, who generated and took it to different levels. So it's not about the game, it's about the individual. When you are connected, you're connected. And it's lonely. The price of the price of because some people can't see as far as you can see. Mm. You know, and that that's not saying that they can't that they don't have the vision, because in their own right, they will find the vision, but they will see what they see. Certain things are just meant for people who know how to see it. John Coltrane, he saw something that no one saw in his time. He played music for someone else. You know, Alice caught on to it, saw the vision, and they both shared that angelic music. That music that he played was incredible. And so much, she grabbed the heart and played it. Oh, my God. Well, she, str she strummed on that heart, man. You know, they say, strum on my pain with your thing. She strummed on that heart and played it, man. Played the heart. I'm talking <clears> about <throat> the only the only thing that's older than that, Nadine, you should know that, is the lie. Yeah. The lyre. The lyre is a is a string is a strong instrument that dates all the way back in Mesopotamia. And uh these are these are string instrument made out of made from cows and stuff like that, from goats. Huh. <clears throat> Are you still there? Hmm. Mile high tops, mile high treetops. I see you. I'm gonna ask him when he comes back on. It says he's still on. Appreciate you there. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. My bad. All right. We got yeah. a, we, we got a, we got a question here from Mile High Treetops. What's the question? He's like, um, he, he wants to ask about Rockefeller Center, and what have you seen? Rockefeller Center. I've been to the Vatican. Hold on. What I've seen in Rockefeller Center. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, you talking about in New York? I guess so, yeah. Well, they started up the ice skating. They, they you know, they, everyone started there. Um, you know, I, I've just seen people. If he wanted to get the whole concept, you know, I don't, I don't know where he want to go with it. Well, Rockefeller Center is what it is. It's a place where you know they built, they they start the ice, built the ice skates. They started the decoration for the fiesta. For the festival, you know, festival um, of uh, Christmas, you know, that's all. They just skate. They start to skate around, and it's Christmas time. Is it? You know. Yeah, we're <laughs> gonna have to break out your uh, Christmas jams pretty soon here. Yeah. Yo, you know, I wanted when I when I recorded that song, I didn't never. We should go to the studio the next time. Don't we? We can't record songs over the phone. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The way we did that, she had a beautiful voice. But I wanted to get her in the studio. You know, we ended up recording that right there live on on a on and I didn't think I didn't like the way that came out. Oh, you're talking just, you're talking that. about the singer? Yeah, remember? And we did the Christmas. She was singing uh mistle, mistletoe. Oh, mistletoe. And um I was just like feeling her vibe, but we we did it 
I mean, it was all it was organic, but I, I like to you know be because she has a beautiful voice. Yeah. Or, okay, we could do that. Yeah, exactly. Shout out to the Brown Buffalo. I see you in the building. Well, yeah, man. Yeah. So, yeah, man. Cats, cats, cats. On oh, like on oh, John Coltrane mm. winning. I'm gonna cue it up for you so you can play it. And that way, because I wanted to play, I'll be back soon <clears throat> to the podcast, and I wanted to tell everybody to, uh, you know, keep the movement going. I'll see you in there. Okay. Well, keep the movement going. Let me say this. Hold on. I'm going to give you the cue, because only me and you can see it, right? Yeah. This beautiful sister was connected, and... um. How long you been? How long you been on? Uh, we've been rocking for about, according to my calculations, it <laughs> says here. No, nope, that's not it. We started at five. Now it's seven. Two hours, just under two hours. Okay. You heard that? What's that? Was that you playing that? Yeah, you like that? Is that who's that, John? No, that's uh Stanley Turrentine. Sugar. Mm-mm. I I play this at the club when we're closing. Right. But it's some jazz, you know what I'm saying? We're gonna get Billy Carson back on too. Don't worry about it, Brown Buffalo. He's an LSB. Yeah. Mm. We're gonna get it back. We're gonna get it. we're gonna get him back on. Hold up. Um I just wanna do this right. Hold up. This is a treat for y'all that are coming in. I told y'all. I can't I can't put on too much, but this is something that I wanted to uh for all us to watch. All right. Let me get it. Let me get it here. This is this is strictly on music and a great artist as such as John Coltrane. Um uh, let me show this. I already sent it to you, but this there's a part. I don't remember. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you the mark where it started at. Cause there's so many. Uh, hold on. Play Kenny G. No, I'm not gonna play Kenny G. Huh? Cover boy says to play Kenny G when the bar closing. I mean, if I want to get everybody out, that'd be good, but. All right, start for eighteen. No, no, no. Start from, start from sixteen thirty. Sixteen thirty. Well, the last thing I said to you. We can zone out. I'm, I'm still running there. Uh, you talking about? You, you're gonna send the link now? I sent it already to you. What's that? It's the last one. The, the, the special report. Yeah, let's go. Start at sixteen. The mark is 1630. 1630. Everybody open your eyes. This is a sister, right? Let me let me open up. Let me open it up real quick. Okay. Like I said, they played the lair. And uh when you play music, you get in tune with the music. Some, you know, Erica Badu, the great Erica Badu says, you know, she's very sensitive about her music. Music was played like way back when there was no there was just nothing but sound. And it was the music when the when the when the universe started harmony, harmony, getting in harmony, beating. The heartbeat is music. Everything is music. Your skin has tones. Everything's music. And the beauty about music is that you don't have to see a person in order to feel them. You know when it's real. You know when it's written down. You know when it's coming from a place because you recognize, you recognize it. And even with the artist who lets the energy go through them, the artist could be. There is no gender when it comes to artists. It's a beautiful thing. This sister has has channeled into one of the best artists, greatest artists to ever do it, and that's John Coltrane. I'm not gonna let. Um, this world be cruel to his history. His name rings bells during the time. 
see, it was jazz used to be, um, it's like an old man sport, but it used to be a, a young person in the fifties when they, when you, when they, when they were listening to it, just on the radio. And then you had these guys come through to take it, man. They were, they were different beings. Even in the Bible, it says that David played the harp to soothe Saul evil heart towards him. He wanted to kill him and he played music. Music is so, so of anything. I just want to give this sister, because we're going to go into Alice land, Alice in Wonderland. The real Alice in Wonderland is this woman right here. This is Alice Coltrane. And I want us all to open our eye, open our minds, close your eyes, meditate, but check this, this sister out as she takes us on her journey. Go ahead, A.D. All right. 1630. Yeah, you just stop I feel the same way as John does. The same way he felt mm -hmm. about religion. I don't to have a set religion to, or religious faith, you know, to say I belong to this faith or this church or so forth, you know. But I know that I am a spiritual being. I can say that today. I am a spiritual being. John was my direction. I feel that, that this is the way that I had to go in life because I accept uh, the music from him, you know, I accept uh, the things that he that he did, and it seems to be exactly what I want to do because there's so many things that he did in music, I would have done the same way myself. It was always when he played that expression that came out of him was really what was inside, you know, whatever was real, whatever was truth. This is what came out of John when he played. <laughs> Z A D, come on, yo. Yeah. Yo, she's in a lock in a zone. Mm -hmm. In a zone. Now I know you are you a mu musician. Mm -hmm. What could you tell me about what she's doing? Is she's meditating? Is she's here right now? Is she going into her, you know, that's the heart, right? Am yeah. I, correct? Yeah. But that's a whole different type of instrument because she's able to flow with that a lot more because she's able to strum fully. If I did that on a piano, mm. it wouldn't mm. sound as cool because I would just be, you know, going up and down the keys. So she's actually able to strum in a way where it feels like you're either dreaming or you're mm. falling into a trance mm. be because the idea of strumming all the way up and strumming all the way down the harp in of itself is part of the experience of playing the harp. <clears throat> so she's putting herself in a trance by doing that. Mm. So it, it's, it's a lot more of, of a magical instrument compared to any other instrument. Right. Because right. strumming all the way up and strumming all the way down sounds beautiful. If I do that on the keys, it's not as cool. If you have a guitar and you go, you strum up, strum down. It's like you only have so many notes you're going to hit. But a harp, 
it's just that much more of a beautiful flow. And it, you're meant to do that every now and then. You know what I mean? It's a magical instrument. Yeah. That's why when they show, uh, you know, angels playing the lyre <clears throat> or playing the harp, it's more magic. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. And this woman, beautiful, is, uh, you know, she's strumming through the stream, streams because look at the body, how the body has all these limbs. And we have, uh, within the heart, there's different chambers, right? Yeah. Different chambers in the hearts, and she's pulling them. She's pulling them. The sound does something incredible. To me, it, it, it makes me feel like I'm, I'm on another planet. And I understand what she's saying. And I know you do. Yeah. Because I, I respect the, I respect the musician in you. Well, let's yeah. go. So I play one. Shout out to Carson. children be first in my life they're first to me they, they, I feel they're my presence from John uh, so I'm not I really don't have to leave home I mean John provided well enough an income uh, from all of the work he did I don't have to leave my children to go out to work uh, so they come first, and if I do get concerts or I have to do uh, work in recording, I do it, but I always, I, I never take away that much time from home. I like to be home, and I don't like to go too far or travel too far away. Michelle is 10, John is 6, Robbie is 5, and Oran is 3. Uh, this year, three years since uh, John's death, uh, I've played about four or five concerts, and really, I, to me, it's quite a lot of work because the, I didn't do anything over the past years. So I liked it very much, uh, that concert that we played at the Glen Cove. One thing that I liked about it was the fact that, that we played for so many children. This is a part of, of, of the music, uh, and Farrell Sanders, as you know, was one of the members of John's band. I had Reggie Workman and Bill Wood on bass. I had my drummer, Rashid Ali, on drums. My concert, I played a selection written by my husband uh, entitled Africa. It's the feeling that I get from playing his music. It's sort of a sharing, you know, with him. It's sort of a being with him on the mental plane or on the or spiritual plane. But for, for me to, to play his music, I don't feel that I'm an extension and I don't feel that I can contribute to anything that he did musically. But I just share in things that he did, that all the things that he developed and produced, I share in them.
Yo, they deep in that jazz, man. They deep in that jazz because on the surface, it doesn't. People don't understand what they're doing. Mm-hmm. But from the piano player perspective and the chords he's hitting, they're mm. they're 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 following a, a chord progression. Mm. It's almost like blues. Blues is a lot easier to interpret mentally. But when you go into Perfect. jazz, jazz is the most hardest style of music to play. If you could play jazz, you could play anything. But they're so mm. they're so deep into this jazz, like this this tune right here. It's like, it, yeah, it, it's, it, it's it's like dirty jazz. It's like it's heavy. <laughs> yeah, well, they would say, you know, they said that uh, there was there was legends, and this is where blues that that said that uh, there was a blind boy who talked to someone and. I think he caught him on a on a, on the street, and it's not Ray Charles, but they said that he traded his soul for the devil because they said that the music was uh the devil's music. You know these you know these stories. They said that uh, that uh, there was a musician musician. He didn't even know how to play. He's got the, the dude now. I get it. But next thing you know, he comes back to the the Jukes bar, the 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 Juke joint. Plays the instrument. Boom. And they said that, yo, that's the devil's music. You know why they don't understand? Because they don't understand the beauty. They don't, you know, when you say the devil's music, you're talking about a light enlightened. You're talking about an archangel, a light. That they don't even understand how this beautiful music came about. It's not going to the pattern what they're not used to. This woman is in a zone. Look at her. She's in a trance. She's in a trance. I'm, I'm yeah. in Alice Wonderland right now. She's yeah. communicating. I believe at this point she's she's actually portaling and channeling um John. Yeah. And they became and they became saints. There's you know about Thess- Thessalonian monk, right? His, I was told that his name was Thessalonian Spheres Monk. Monk, and these dudes were playing. You, you caught it, AD, because you are a musician. I got to give this to you. You're a musician that plays by ear. You can hear things. You can hear things that we can't see, mm-hmm. and you can see with your ears. You know what I'm saying? Guam, DJ Guam. Yeah. You can see things when you're playing. That musician is a very powerful thing. I learned. I learned that, and it's like. This woman is in a trance. I'm almost, I'm almost, now I don't want everybody to go around and, and uh, start dancing around campfires now. You might burn up your crib. This is going to be very, it could be very detriment. <laughs> I'm not telling nobody to go out there and cut chicken's neck off and priest, where well, we heard the pot crap. Priest said, go out there. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that. Please don't do that. And that's a hard, don't be killing chickens anyway, just for no reason. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, you know, but uh, <laughs> yo, you got to put out disclaimers for everything now. Yeah. Now, you know, but the music does put you in a trance, a trance. Yeah. And if she's in a trance, then I got to be in a trance. Yeah. <clears throat> Not to mention, they're, um, they've memorized their chord progressions. So not mm. only... You know, for the person who's just watching it happen, it's like, how is this happening and what the hell is happening? In their minds, they're they're going through the progression. So, it, like, as the piano player is going, she's like, all right, A flat major. Do you know what I mean? Okay, back to the C minor. Okay, going back to D sharp. Back to A flat major. And then, so, they have these chord progressions. And then they have the A part, the B part, the C part, and the D part. We know it in the rap world. Intro, uh, chorus, verse, chorus, verse, maybe like a bridge, chorus, verse, chorus, end, right? In the jazz world, it's the A part, B part, C part, D part. They can go all the way up. They can go all the way up the alphabet. It depends on the song. Most of the time, it'd be up to like D part, A part, B part, C part. And then they would, uh, you know, have a part for, for the soloist. So in most cases, like a, a, in a general part, it'd be like they would start the song with an A part, do the basic melody of the hook, and then do the B part for that same part, 
and then they go back to A part, but now it's a solo. So yeah. everyone else is doing the same thing and A part, but now the saxophone player gets to do whatever the hell he wants. And they run through that whole thing with the with that saxophone player solo. Then they do it again and now the guitar player has a solo. Then they do it again and the piano player has a solo. And they might give the drummer a solo, which is, you know, usually sometimes shorter. And then they go back and they do the whole chorus again as the song goes. And then they used to close out. But in yeah, these like- Yeah, in these cases, their solos can go on as long as they want. There's so much free format in the jazz world. If you yeah. if you remember uh Back to the Future, I'm trying to make it easy for people who are like not musicians. Um remember Back to the Future <clears throat> when Marty went on stage <clears throat> and uh he was like he was like give him a guitar. Remember? And then he uh these are all real jazz musicians. These are all like um they're all they're, they're called session players. They're able to do anything. So he just says this one line. I'll just play the one line. Well, Hold on, cover boy, what are you guys, doing there? Blues riff and B. Watch me for the changes and try and keep up, okay? Boom. So he just says it's a blues riff and B. Watch me for the changes and try to keep up. So any jazz player knows exactly what he's talking about. Because blues riff, in their mind, they're thinking one four five. One four five is the changes of blues. So just mm. so it's amazing just knowing that, and then now they can solo. He gets the whole solo on this thing. They don't know exactly what what's gonna happen, but they know a blues riff. They know what key it's in, and they just go. <clears throat> Any session player knows how to do that. Uh, the Tonight Show band, uh, they, they have session players. Uh, if you've seen Jimmy uh, Fallon, The Roots, you know The Roots? Those guys are amazing. Mm-hmm. The Roots are session players. They can play any song, anytime, anywhere. It's just, they're just, they've got musical geniuses. Anyway, they got musical genius uh, mentality, but it's because they know the format <clears throat> of music. Right. Anyway. That's all I wanted but to say. There is no, yeah, that's the beauty because there is none. What what are rules? Like you said, there's a set of rules, but then there's some people that take it beyond. Miles Davis, yeah, you know, um, Miles Davis, but John Coltrane is considered. Uh, oh, he's yeah. almost, yeah, he's he he, he you know he he uh he embodied nature itself and outside of the realms of nature, like all. To play the way and how she tapped in. The two is the best. The two, how she tapped in. Because she understands the realm that he's in. Mm-hmm. This is called communication. You got to understand what's going on here. That, you know, um, in the beginning was the word. And now, now you got the word manifested, made flesh. She's the, she, you know, and you see a, a natural, how she going in with the band. All those brothers are locked in. And I know you understand, like you said, to the average looker, y'all can't even understand what's going on. It almost looks like a seance yeah. that's taking place. Yeah. Everyone's mesmerized. <clears throat> they don't they they can't, but they are so locked in. I'm I'm glad you said that. Yeah. It's perfect. It's so locked in is on higher levels. Things look a certain way, but they be on deep, 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 deep levels. Yeah. Especially when you're dealing with this music. Right. Play That's more. true. All right. Oops. Hold on a second, and I may have. Here we go. Sixteen. And she with the brothers. The brothers is playing. They going. She always. She already with them. She like. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking too. Yeah, yeah, going too slow. Like you said. I'm with it. She's like, yeah, I'm with y'all. She's in there. Yeah. Elohim. She's in there. Elohim. She's in there. I love it. Uh, 
I would like to say, to state at this time, that there were days that I know that I spent more than 20 hours in meditation. And there were periods of time that lapsed like beyond uh, two or three weeks that I know that I was well beyond what the human endurance is when it comes to meditation. And uh, I found out so much about myself and about the people around me mm. and about my husband and family. And mm. also I found that out that whatever questions that I might have had in my mind concerning whatever events in the future or past uh, were answered. My personal experience uh, in meditation brought me face to face with God. Hand in Jumping. hand, heart to heart. And almost to the point he was me and I was him. Like I said, there were demands made, definite demands, which uh, took me um, away from uh, of the world. You know, yeah, at one on. point, almost away from everything. <clears throat> yeah, she connected to Source. <laughs> she locked in. She locked in. She connected. Talk, Dad. Talk. <laughs> yeah. It, and it's easy it's easier for the females too, man. A lot of females have that natural intuition. They've got that natural divine feminine. They're able to lock in with God quicker too if they're able to you know meditate like that. She said she meditated for days. The earth. Yeah, they're the earth. They represent like everything that grows out sponge they take you put in they push it they push it out and it all and all of a sudden they don't just give it melanin they give it uh a flavor a taste in it so she's take yo i love it i'm glad you see that she, yeah she, she, she locked it she locked she it sound like yeah she almost like it almost sounds like almost if i was to just hear i would think she was like i wouldn't say hippie i would say that she's under a, a spell, trance. She's mm -hmm. in a not not but but translucent, trance parent. She's trance Yurok Express. You can see it in her eyes though. She's not a damn transformer though. She's, yeah. But she did transform in the music. Mm. She gave something that you can't even fathom. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh no, I was just she, saying she that you... somebody. She looked like somebody. You could tell that she's seen things or she, yeah. or that she's been through an experience. You know how you can tell you, you, you talk to somebody who's just been through it and they mm -hmm. have, they, they talk to you and they have this sense of like, not exhaustion, yeah, but uh, right. a sense of peace to where like, they're just happy to be alive. Right. Or, right. or they, or they feel gratefulness. You can see their, they're they're great. I think that's a better way to put it. You can see how grateful they are of life, right? Because they've either seen yeah. something, been through something. You know, some people who have been through trauma are able to come out like that. People who have, uh, I think there's, I think there's several paths to that type of energy. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the most purest probably is meditation. Mm -hmm. She's definitely gone through it. She's definitely. She said she'd meditated longer than most humans probably should have. But I get it, because once you fast, if you fasted for a long time, you're not even hungry anymore. Your body mm. starts eating itself and starts creating its own survival mechanism, which some say is, you know, cleansing and, you know, your red, your red blood cells split and start creating their own sugars and all that stuff. Interesting. Yeah, but then it, it starts... You start to enhance smell. Other senses enhance. Yeah. More. Because what you what you don't use, you lose. But what, what you don't use, it enhances other parts. Yeah. No, so I what think don't kill you. Hmm? There's definitely benefits to fasting. Oh, I think, she's in there. Yeah. The longest I went fasting was 48 hours. And for me, that was a long time. 
to eat no food. And I you did. Fast for 48, you fast for 48 hours? I fasted for 40. I, I went two days with no food. I was trying it out. This was back when I was living in Irvine. You was on the mushroom trip? Or what? No. Just... No, I just, I, I was like, I learned about fasting. I thought it was interesting. So I just didn't mm. eat for two days, but I was drinking water. If I knew, mm. if I knew what I knew now, I would have been supplementing mm. vitamin D3. I would have been taking more salt. I would have been having more minerals. I would have been taking creatine. That's not fasting. That's not fasting. That's that's right. That's like that's slowing. Uh, fast, minerals. I, I would still take minerals if I was going to fast. Now I didn't know what I knew net now then. Back then I was just mm. like, oh, I'm just not going to eat any food. But now what I know, I would have still taken minerals. But uh, anyway, I went 48 mm. hours and I got started to get lightheaded. And I got mm. to a point where, like, my body was like, if you don't eat now, so you're going to pass the fuck out. So right. uh, I ended up just up? just gorging in on some food after 48 hours. But it was an interesting experience. I'm glad I went through it. I, fe- I did feel some kind of cleansing, um, uh, you know, feeling afterwards. But I don't think I did it right. And if I was going to do it nowadays, I would do it smarter because now I've learned some things. But back then, I just didn't eat food for two days and uh, I ended up just making myself super hungry by, um, like, suddenly. Because I wasn't hungry for a minute. And then all of a sudden, extreme hunger came about. And uh, my blood sugar dropped to a point where I, was, I just got so dizzy, I almost passed out. But I think that was a lack of minerals. Anyway. You see out of body. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I've had yeah, the out of body experiences. Yeah. The earth, yeah, we got the, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You said you, um, I had an incredible one, extreme ones, yeah, yeah, I had an, ones. I had an incredible one, so crazy that I, I texted Priest right after, and I was like, Priest, I get it because this one was so, I was over like the Grand Canyon, I was over like a desert, and it was so exact. I remember looking around and seeing such details in the clouds and seeing so many, de- I was like, there's no way I'm imagining this. Because the details that were there stayed there. I was looking at details that weren't moving. But I was mm. flying. And I'm like, this experience, my mind can't imagine all of this stuff. This is just too incredible. I definitely was um, at another place. But I noticed that these out-of-body experiences only happen when I slightly under-eat. So, because mm. you know I track calories and I track uh, macros with Chronometer, this, this like website tool. So if I slightly under eat my calories and I go to and I go to bed, I'll wake up a little hungry, but uh I'll go back to sleep and that's when I'll have these like astral projection type of dreams and stuff. But there has to be no food in the stomach. Yeah. If there's food in your stomach, your all the blood goes into your stomach and it's just trying to digest food. But it <laughs> it always happens in the morning. It was, an incred- it was an incredible experience. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Jimmy B said, yo, sound depressing. Was you, did you have a good time? Hey, yeah. Yo. Oh, I was. Like- it was amazing because yeah. I was flying. That flight, right? I know it was a flight. Was beautiful. And you can control the flight. I was able to control it t- to look up. I can mm-hmm. control it to look down. And that mm-hmm. that's my favorite part. That's my favorite part. Sometimes uh, I, I've had those experiences where... I'm in a location. I know I'm having an out-of-body experience. I can't feel my body. And I know that I'm asleep. But um, I'm surrounded by people. And I'm like, okay, this is cool and all. These are all strange faces. I've never seen these people before. But I'm going to walk outside and just fly. So I straight up walk outside. And I'm like in some type of hotel in this one of them. And I I just look up and I just slowly try to lift up. And then I end up just flying. It's just what I'd rather prefer, I prefer doing. I could have stuck you know around. I could have stuck around and talked to people. You know what's crazy? Yeah. You need a you need a mouth to talk and eyes to see. I just want to ask you a question. What eyes were you seeing with when your oh, eyes were closed? The third eye. And here's what's crazy. Um, Did you hear? Yeah, yo. Um, I don't know if you hear. I can't explain it. you speak? Would you can you hear yourself when you're talking? Yeah. Oh, you could definitely talk. But you know, you've had dreams where you're talking. 
I'm sure you've all had that. Yeah, but what voice is that coming from? The um, from you. That's mm-hmm. a, that, that's your inner voice. I don't know which in reality, mind you sleep. Yeah, you said you said right third eye because re, in reality you sleep. In reality, your eyes are closed, but then you light comes on and you can see. It's like damn, like yeah. I'm hearing your I'm hearing your testimony, and I'm like damn. Yeah. You're able to see with your eyes closed. We call it the dream state. You and you were not only that you had physical you had physical um, avatar. You had you had a um, aviator like you have you begin to take flight. Yeah, but here's the thing: when you're dreaming and you're having an out of body experience, your third eye is still closed. You, a lot of us have had dreams and out of body experiences, but our third eye is still closed. You can open that eye just as easily. I know it's weird. You can just open that eye as easy as you can open your regular eyes. So as you're dreaming and you're having this state, you can feel that your eyes are closed. Open your eyes. You tell yourself to open your eyes, and your physical eyes don't open, but you actually end up opening your own third eye. And it feels like you're opening your regular eye. That's why they call it an eye, because it literally feels like you're opening your eyes. So when I was having this out-of-body experience, I'm like, I'm going to open my eyes. And I did. Mm. But I didn't open my physical eyes. I opened my third eye. And when I, once I did that, it felt like I opened my eyes to uh, like the astral world. Everything just became so colorful and so clear. And I've had so many of them. And I'm not the only one that's gone through these. I mean, a lot of people have had... Um, out of body experiences but like the first time they usually happen they uh, people get freaked out and technically it's a form of sleep paralysis because you go through sleep paralysis and it has to happen in the morning there's apps you can download that t- that teach you how to do it but for me it happens in the fetal position um, and then after I wake up because I have to wake up and feed my cat and I go back to sleep and then that's when it starts to happen uh, apparently, you need to have a little bit of cortisol in your system and be half awake for it to really happen, and have no no food in your stomach. But absolutely incredible that th- those experiences alone make uh, the way you appreciate life just so much more, and you're like not afraid of death because you see that there's so much more to this reality than what we see physically. Our ego is such a uh, an illusion. Disappointment. <laughs> the, the, it's, it's, like we need our ego for survival, but it, it's not real. Like it's not, it's not who we really are. Do you know what I'm saying? It's so much deeper than that. And you know, mushrooms can give you that same realization. Some people get that same realization from doing all kinds of theogens, not, not just mushrooms, but acid and you know, um, there's all kinds of stuff that'll make people have that meditation. Uh, it's that whole idea that we are all one. It's what opens up your third eye. All that stuff. But it's beautiful, man. Reggae. Yeah. Reggae, man. I'm talking about rhythm. Oh, Cap Jones Reggae. says he's experienced sleep paralysis since he was young, but never had, huh? So, Cap Jones, what what happens when you have sleep paralysis? Do you you probably wake up? So you're awake and realize you can't move your body. Um, what what I do is I fall into a I fall into a deeper sleep. If you've seen Inception, that's a great great example of astral projection because there's a sleep heavier than your sleep. So there's level one sleep and then there's level two sleep where you fall into a deeper, deeper sleep. Do you know what I mean? If you've seen Inception, you know what I'm talking about. You fall asleep, you're having a certain type of dream. But then there's a dream within the dream. That's when you that's when you leave your body. That's when you're gone. And I've been gone, man. I've left my body and been miles in the sky and just I don't know where the heck I was, but I was just not here. Right. And then uh, anything can happen. It'll just zoom you right back afterwards. But it's it's incredible experience, man. That's right. But it happens once I take a break. Right. The weed doesn't Will help. You? The weed won't right. get you. The weed won't get you there. You have to take a break from weed mm-hmm. to really feel it. Go ahead. Um, 
Um, there's there's so many questions. All right, there's one. There was one time. There's, and this this happens, right? And it's it's dealing with um snow. I don't know. I think I said it in the rhyme, and I was explaining something that really happened. And because snow is white, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you go people that skateboard. I mean, people that snowboard. They know when it gets nighttime. Somehow the snow looks like it's illuminating, <laughs> for real. It, in the moonlight hitting the snow, it looks like it glows. And there's certain parts of Brooklyn. There was one this block. I don't care if you call it a ghetto. It's still a forest when you. It's still a forest where you got trees that's growing out of it, and here and there. But it was one night when it snowed, and on that night the snow it was like. Glow. I don't know what it was, but I saw it all. It was like I took an acid trip because the snow became brighter. <laughs> I was just walking, and for some reason, I was out there by myself. Mm. You know what I mean? So I know what you is a euphoric feeling that sometimes the universe says, "Okay, you know, we also make we make mushrooms, phenoms, the things that happen." I think that's their, their way of saying, man, I know you can't explain this whole thing. <laughs> they told stories to explain nighttime. Mm -hmm. Yep. Somebody said it's snowing for him. <laughs> Horace versus Set. <laughs> yeah. How would you say Horace versus Set? Yeah. Oh, Horace versus I'm Set. I'm talking about snow. I'm not talking about the desert. Yeah, because yeah. Because you have different, you have different, um, Elements in the desert. Yeah. The desert, it gets hot at night, it gets cold. It really, with, what, tri what tripped me out about Kemet is that there's a water. <laughs> Canals always trip me out, but there's a desert and you have water just running through it, but it's labeled a desert. Crazy. Some parts of Arizona is like that too. It's amazing. It's amazing. But you ever been? You ever been to? You ever one time we was on a trip, right? We was we was just we was just driving, took a uh, driving a driving trip. Shout out to Alyssa. What up, Alyssa? If you listen, if you are looking, she knows this is actually happened. We driving, and the water was going the same way the car was going. It's supposed to be the opposite. It was weird. You mean the boat? No, the water was going the opposite way of it. Supposed it was going the opposite way. It's so supposed it went back, but it was going like we were going down a hill. The water was coming up like that. It's weird. Oh, so you were going like uh, opposing the stream? Yeah, if you if you put in the mystery spot, there's there's also in Santa Fe. We we've been there, but there's portals like this all over the planet. All the female, all the trees are female. And for some reason, they've been at the top. And it's this house, and it's called the Mystery Spot. It's, it's out in uh, Santa Ana. It's a real place. I've seen real that with the, uh, where the gravity is all off. Yeah. I actually, I actually been there. Yeah. Exactly. A couple of times. And I've been in that house. That house, gravity is off. I saw a, I saw a mother. I saw a daughter turn the same size as her father. No lie. Yeah, there you go. That's actually standing. He's actually standing straight, but check that out. I was in that room. Something's off with the with the. Uh, I wonder what the animals do, though. Like how do, when nobody. But how do you know crazy. that they just didn't build the house in an awkward position, or that the whole no, land? No, it's just straight. They have measurements. They have the measurements. You know how when people architects, yeah. they have all of that. When you pass this, you feel the energy as soon as you get on it. It's something with the gravity, but it's real. I was there. And, and as soon as you start leaning, as soon as you're walking, and all the trees above, I noticed that they were bent towards this house. They were bent. So it's something with the gravity. Or off, but there's a couple of places in Portland like that. My, and, um, my guess... Is That's that what you can do every night, though, right? You float, float like that guy in the white. Yeah. 
My guess <laughs> is that that is an intersection of ley lines. Okay. You, you know, see that? Yeah. It's weird. It's nothing like going there, though. We got to take a trip there. Look at that. Huh. Yeah, see, they many people look. I tried to debunk. It was just weird. So you can stand like that. Now he he's not falling because he's standing straight up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. He's standing straight. Like you could walk like that. You will not fall. The balls go upward. Look, that's like in the fifties, right? That's been going on since the fifties. But I'll be wondering if owls come there at nighttime, and what happens when the deer and the animals. The critters come there because they might they might see something else. You know, they they figure there it goes here. Yeah. At nighttime, when that place closed, probably wow, yo. Hmm. They probably either they Oh, it's in Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz. Where they where they filmed um Lost Boys. Oh, okay. Yeah, Lost Boys. They all jumped off the mountain. Stop flying, they turn into vampires. One of my favorite movies. Huh. 80s. Thou shalt not kill. Remember that song? Yeah. I used it. Thou, that was from that movie. One of the Thou girls. Shalt, one of the girls huh? plays that at the club. Thou shalt not kill. Yeah, that's a Thou shalt. And the girl and the, it's haunting when the when the um when the voices of uh the children sing it. Yeah. There's a song by the Abyssinians. I don't know if we get in trouble, but we played it the other night. Oh man, it's haunted, man. It's the they sound like angelic being. Yo, it's crazy. They were so high. Shout out to Lord Fury, man. He knows they can hit notes that make your bones. It's called their. Should we just play it? Will I get in trouble if we play reggae? Um, I mean, it depends. It's probably still copywritten, but I could probably play two seconds of it. Damn, Santa Cruz is on the way to San Francisco. Mm, I don't want to get us in trouble, but but play uh, there is no play uh, the Abyssinians. There is no end. That's just far from us. But so uh, yes, yeah, I was. Damn, we, we down here. Up, me and Ghost, we did a show out there that I wanted to go because we was right there, like maybe 15 minutes away. I was like, yo, we got to go. Yo, you want to go? Yo, AD, let's go. Go where? Let's take to uh, the mystery spot. All the way in Santa Cruz? Yeah. Oh, we take a day. We look, we do a podcast. We do a podcast. We take a day. Just go out, going out there. No, we're not, we're not just going to go just to the mystery spot. We just go out there and chill. We go to the mystery spot, though. We 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 do the podcast live there. One day, you know what I'm saying? So you can see, you can experience. Because you should be beating at the doors of the mystery spot. How much out-of-body experience? You have an out-of-body experience more than anybody I've talked to. You have one each night, right? Not each night, but like once every two weeks at least. It has to, yeah, be, it has yeah. to be a day where I under-eat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you deal. You dealing with the mystery. every every you now and then. I do that. I'll eat less than I. It's called. I go into a caloric deficit. But you I know, mean, maybe because maybe because you have a cat. You know, cats be going. To, they they say they steal your breath. They come over your mouth and uh. He he he's they, almost suffocated me a few times. Yeah, they say that. They I'll say be cats. I'll be asleep, and then all of a sudden, mojito will just come up and lay right on top of my face and I'll be like yo like what makes you think that's a good place to lay down <laughs> you might make a cushion out of your cheeks yeah he's just like <laughs> right in front of my face he'll just lay down and I'm like nah you can't lay there mm. we we got a super chat but uh, I think it's on some drama a drama with who? It's uh with Oni Dakini. It's fifty bucks, so I feel bad ignoring it. Right, well, what's what's going on? Uh, Oni Dakini says, "Cover boy, on some real shit, you running people off the show. 
You talking dough from KP's pocket. You're taking dough from KP's pocket. Be humble. It's admirable. No shame in being corrected. We here to support KP. He keep giving you opportunity and you keep spitting in his face. Damn. 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 Yo, cover boy, man. You need to chill. Yo, leave old Katie alone, man. She's a talented sister. Yeah. Well, she's very talented. And she make she got a couple of remixes that I really like, especially the heavy metal one. She went in. Wow. Yep, yep. Um, and she she draws too. Have you seen her her artwork? Mm -mm. She's got some nice paintings and drawings. Yeah. She draws too. Yeah, she draws too. She's an artist. She sent something recently. I'll, I'll I'll resend it to you. I know you're out and about and everything, but she did send something that she wanted you to see. But uh, I told her I was going to show you when you got back. Yeah. But, uh, okay, so we, we gave that out there. So we're moving on. We're moving on. It's all good. Um, Yeah, I ain't going to say nothing else about that. I, I says salute to all the sisters. To all the sisters, yeah, yo, uh oh, the sister, yeah, man. So that <laughs> next time we get is some Nina Simone, okay, but Alice, Alice, uh, culture, and I, I, I believe that she deserves it. And um, Odie Dakini, I need you to look at that one, Alice, because mm -hmm. you, I think sometimes. You can get it in a trance and go in and, and go in. Thank you for your your remixes that you went that you did. Um, Tava boy, I'm gonna have to, you gotta chill, man. Thanks for yeah. Come on, man. For real, we we're, we're not playing that type of game. We're running people away. Yeah. yeah. This is about being fruitful, and we all about uh. Like I always say, we all about elevation, elevation, um, and strengthening each other. You know, you first strengthen yourself. That's the best way to do it. If you got your talent, put your talent down, and then, um, you know, make it, make it work, make it, make it work. Yes, sir. Mothers and aunties. Nieces, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. All right, so what I wanted to say, there's a little bit more on um, uh, Alice Coltrane. Mm -hmm. But then it jumps into uh, uh, Nina, Nina Simone. We'll do something on her because certain up, man, everything changed now. Nobody's calling on that energy, that vibe. You know, sisters, look, when you lock in, when you lock in, like that, it's a different type of vibe. It's not that vibe I'm talking about. It's that vibe that, you know, people resonate to. Your voice becomes a pillar in the community, in the neighborhood. You surround, you walk, people understand. They they, they see something about you. Now, these women, I wouldn't say, I would say they just on some superwoman, because if you think about a superwoman, man, wouldn't that wouldn't that be scary? Certain women can, I mean, you could be on a on a high level. Angela Davis, big at afro. But where Alice was going at, she got that name Alice. Shout out to all the Alice's out there. All the Alice's. <laughs> hmm. You know what I mean? The A. A is for Apple. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> they did that to defeat the God. The God said A is for Allah. They said A is for Apple. Apple's still good, though. Mm -hmm. um, you like apples? You know, they say well, Apple a day keep the doctor away. I don't know what you got what you got on, on apples now. I mean, I like apple pears. You, ha you ever had an apple pear? I don't just go get up and okay, y'all, let's let's go in. I don't just <laughs> pop up and go get an apple like that. You know what I mean? It's like they, there's a bunch of them in the store, and I'm I'm gonna front no, nobody gonna front on apples. Remember, I had my problem with oranges yeah. after me. And, 
I had a long discussion with uh, um, Ghost. Really? And I was like, yeah, no. yeah, orange juice, man. Orange juice. If it ain't freshly squeezed, please. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with and that. I don't mean just, yeah, I don't mean nobody just getting them out there. Yeah, because I taste, yeah, your orange juice be good. You got them fresh squeezed. Yeah, Whole Foods. Yeah, yeah exactly. Sometimes they be look like milk. Word, it be so Yeah, perfect. so I mean, it's like a, in the summer, in the summertime, oranges are more ripe, so you get really nice golden orange juice. Right now, the, all the um, orange juice in Whole Foods is imported from Mexico, and it kind of looks like lemonade. It, Move it, over orange juice. It's yeah. with the time. You know about you know it's coming in. You know it's coming into play. Mm. Pomegranate, baby. Yeah. Right? Right. Red. They let you know. They look like they like what you what's some ornaments you put on the on the on the Christmas tree? Oh yeah. What they Yeah, what they call jingle bells? Yeah. It would look like big, bright, big, big fat. Pomegranate, yo, I, I look. I got two big red ones, right? Thanksgiving, we running around. We went to this store called Super Crazy Food. I don't know what it's called. One of these supermarkets, I, <laughs> I will blow them up. But this one was super duper. It's like bizarre, crazy, super. I was like, damn, it was so ill. You you be by the Brooklyn, right under Brooklyn, you can see the water because there's a whole bunch of mob stuff was going down with the, with the supermarkets. Cali, bougie, don't got that problem. Cali goes, no, we got an avocado toast. We don't start <laughs> dealing with all that wild stuff. It's just avocado toast and gym. And there's, you know, always on the way, you got wheat, wheat grass. <laughs> it's not that wild. Either, you know what I'm saying? We out there, it's just got wild. Yeah. But I got these two two pomegranates. The reason why New York we have some good the pomegranates because Cali sells them the best the, the best the best part. Now NY got some apples for you. Probably the big apple when you go up near uh, Vermont. Well, I'll be performing soon. Shout out to uh, John Newsom, and we're gonna be doing that. We're gonna do an announcement. The birth it's gonna be on, on Solomon's birthday. Vermont and them got that. Maple syrup is off the hook. Stabbing trees becoming maple syrup, bro. Y'all, y'all like y'all. <laughs> you like y'all, yeah, yeah. Uh, crepes. That's where you get bougie. <laughs> crepes. I don't do pancakes. You, I don't do waffles. I do crepes. Crepes. Yeah, crepes. Crepes are for the. That's an upscale pancake. Oh yeah, yeah. I used to call them creepies. Yeah, exactly. They're real big. Got to fold them up. Put jelly in them. You put jelly in them. You put syrup. I don't even know if you put syrup on them. I so prefer syrup. I learned about crepes and all of that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, French, French, they get, they get down like that. Cause they get fancy. They like fancy food. Italian food is like, hey, this is what it is. Taste it. And you'd be like, damn, it's, it's, it's really good. It's cool. I've had it before. I'm just, I'm more of a waffle guy. Okay, I got a question for you. Are you a waffle guy? Yeah, you remember? We went to that one diner and he's got that fat ass waffle. Yeah, <laughs> man, it's too big, yo. Yeah. Like, I was like, whoa. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. That was bomb, yeah. though. Because you got the crevice for, all right, for everybody straight up. Biscuit or cornbread? What are we doing? Which one? Ooh, biscuit. If they if they make the biscuit right, biscuit's not easy. Nah, it's so easy to walk out on the road. Take your time. The cornbread. Is that, corn, cornbread has to be hot. Do it. If you want to make some cornbread, take it slow. Hold on. In heaven's name. <laughs> See nowadays nowadays I'd be trying to focus more on protein. But I mean if it was some some hot biscuits, I probably would like take one that's super hot and put some honey. Oh, man, don't say hot biscuits like that. I, I didn't like Mike when he said hot milk. No. He said <laughs> he, I don't like that, man. I was like, why is the man talking about giving somebody <laughs> I, I, me and the kids we sit down? 
And it's nothing wrong with giving them hot. Should have never said hot milk. You know, <laughs> Give them some hot milk. Well, yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> nah. nah, cold milk. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Why? But um, yeah. So you got you you gonna take biscuits over cornbread, right? Yeah, with butter and honey. All right, I'm with you on that. Um, I don't know if I'm with you, right? With you on the honey though. Yeah, you know I love the honey. Yeah. What kind? Maple? Uh Manuka? <clears throat> no, just regular ass uh organic raw honey. I'm gonna go with biscuits with jelly in the middle. Ooh. Take it old well what fla- what flavor jelly? Um, you ever had grape see, jelly? Trying to see my bougie. Come on, bro. Jelly <laughs> is grape. That's the first one. Everything <laughs> else came up out of that. And before strawberry and all of that jam was great. That's what it was. Grapes was easy to get, but a bunch of clusters. But then strawberries, you know, you have to break that down. Cook it. You got to cook it. And you add sugar. You got to cook it down. I don't want to, you know, people, you can make your own jelly. It's crazy. Yeah. You know what I don't like? I don't tell all the cooks out there. We're going to do pot craft. We're going to do the pot craft show. Yeah, I like the food talk. I could talk about food all day. What what I don't like is marmalade. You ever had marmalade? Hell no. I'm with you on that. <laughs> I don't marmalade, like it. Yo, marmalade is a generic. I don't know if it's a real. I don't know where it came from. <laughs> you know, old people eat that, man. When you get old, they get yeah. their taste. It's like, why? Marmalade. It's not good. No, because they be loose and they also eat sugarless cookies. Yeah. The cookies be mad, hard, and it's like, come on, man, you know. Like, what's the they say? You know how I'm about to do the cookies and stuff like that because they don't, you know, at that age, they don't really, they don't taste all the sugar they want to taste. <laughs> they get a, a big, dry cookie with oak coming out for it. You know, as soon as you grab it, oat just falls. <laughs> yeah, I'm not big on oatmeal. Not an oatmeal fan. Nah, I am. I am. You I like am. oatmeal? I must, I must confess, yeah. Oatmeal, I, I played myself and went for grits. When we was young, I was. I said, oh, I'm going to go for grits. Mark, my nephew, went for oatmeal. Now, Rise I, and choice. I Rise haven't had choice. much grits. How, how, how do you like grits? I think I've had them I, like twice. Yeah, I had them. I had them. I had them the, oh, the other day. I grits to the, like a form of harmony. It's a part. So I, I could ask you, would you want porridge or grits? Porridge or grits or oatmeal? Then you have another one. I forgot the name of the other. We look at the chat room. Yeah, I'm not. Chutney. Nah, Chutney's Indian man. We just had Indian food. Shout out to huh. Indian. Yo, Indian food might be the top when it comes to flavor, yo. Yeah. Ooh, it might be. I'm not going to lie. It's hard to beat them, boy. Cause they they just keep coming. Even Solomon said that. And they said, yo, they come with left, right, left, hook, hook, hook uppercut, left, left. Because <laughs> they, they flavors just be like, here, I'll hit you with this. This is sweet, but then it's spicy at the same time. The more you eat it, it starts turning into, like, you know, it starts... And the fluffiness of the basmati. Wow. He's like, come on. Basmati rice. Basmati. Yeah. That, basmati that... rice because should it tastes like it costs uh ninety dollars a pound. I just switched to uh basmati uh two weeks ago. Yeah. Cause you know I was always basmati... I was always getting yeah. that jasmine rice. Yeah, that's the wackest one. But then I switched Ill's to basmati. Name. Ellis name, but the whack is one. Jasmine Rice. Yeah. Best name. Whack is one. Basmati yeah. Rice sounds like a Maserati. <laughs> it's like when you get when you you it's like, oh, can I get Basmati Rice? It's like it's like what? It's like a drop of jewels. Yeah. Basmati Rice. Basmati. Well, Jasmine is more Asian, right? And Basmati is more Middle Eastern. And I was eating more Mediterranean food. So I was like, why am I having Mediterranean food with jasmine rice? It didn't make sense. So I switched to basmati rice because I would use a, the uh, tzatziki sauce. And I, I eat these, this bread. Um, it's like a flat bread. Lavash. Yeah. 
So I would have Lavas Lava bread, uh, some type of beef, ground beef with tzatziki sauce and basmati rice. That's bomb. I was eating that for for a minute. What kind of sauce? Tzatziki. It's like a mm. it's like a yogurt gar it's like a garlic yogurt uh type of sauce. If you've ever if you've ever had a gyro, a gyro, um a gyro, um mm -hmm. they put tzatziki sauce in there. Oh yeah, you know I ain't with that. I don't like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like a, gar like the, it's like a garlic uh, yogurt. I haven't seen these in a long time. They used to have uh you used to have this garlic paste. Shout out to Lil Da Vinci. If it's a garlic yeah. paste, it's probably the same thing. It's probably tzatziki sauce because it's just basically garlic yogurt. Yeah, but I saw something green in it. Yeah, that's the... Um, they put... It's like chopped up uh, parsley. Or cucumber. <laughs> you going to... <laughs> yeah, hold on, let me... Uh, let me sound look like old earth. <laughs> you know what we used to eat? Stuff is like, nah, I don't like that. It's uh, it's, like, no. it's, it's got uh, chunks of cucumber. Remember when all, all the people come up and be like, well, what's this in that? They be like, let me taste that. Man, that ain't nothing but onion. Yeah. <laughs> that ain't nothing but onion. That's pickle. That's pickle. Yeah. Pickle is green. <laughs> yeah, it's green. It's too flat. It's not a pickle. Pickles it can be diced. You know, now you get me hungry, man. And I'm sitting over here. I got, uh oh. oh. Hey, when, once we start talking about food, you know, I'm going to go in. Oh, yeah. Greek food, what's the main ingredient for Greek Mediterranean type of food? Is this trivia? Yeah. What's the main ingredient? For Greek food? Yeah. Like, what would you call it? Like, uh, uh, spicy? It'd probably be olive oil. It's Very the, close. I'll give, I give it to you. It's the me yeah. Mediterranean liquid gold. It's yeah. it's everywhere in Greek cuisine. And that's the one mm -hmm. oil that is, like, legit. Besides avocado oil, like, olive oil. Is not a uh, stop disrespecting grape seed oil, man. I'm it's not. It's not a seed oil. You you don't want seed oils, but great. Uh, disrespecting grape seed. I was yeah. told. I was I was told by nutrition. Yeah, <laughs> I, I've I've had debates with nutritionists, and then they th said, "You know what's you know what's good about grape seed oil?" They said, "It's great with when you cook it because you don't suppose to cook." Olive oil. You're supposed to just eat it right. as is. Right. So, but grapeseed oil is good for cooking because it's just a high. I'm not saying like go out there and drink grapeseed oil. Yeah, no, I feel you. What you doing on my front porch? Really? <laughs> <laughs> <Hey. grandma's, laughs> what you doing in my living room? Yeah, but yeah. All right, so yeah, so the main ingredients, yep, is olive oil, but I, the main word I was looking for is herbal. It's more herbal. Herbal? So a lot of herbs, yeah. A lot of herbs go into Middle East. Is, <clears throat> they eat a lot of herbs. So. And, and feta cheese. Yeah, par parsley, pickled. Pickled would be more of a Greek. Or, well, they do pickles too, because they pickle it. I've heard this. And you can correct me if I'm wrong, but this is what I heard. For all my nutritionists out there, I heard that pickled food, anything pickled, is super healthy for you. Yeah, because it's it's fermented, and anything fermented is good for the gut microbiome. Wow. It also, Where have we been living? It also helps eliminate visceral fat. That's true. So pickled onions, pickled, they got pickled eggs, pickled yeah. uh, anything that's fermented, it's good for you, I heard. Wow. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people are going to be saying, reset, everything that's fermented, even fruit, 
and potatoes. And that's vodka. Now, <laughs> I know it's going to be like, uh, <laughs> ferment these dang old potatoes and get up there. There's a bird that gets drunk. He's from uh, New Orleans. Put in the drunken pigeon real quick. Drunk pigeon? Yeah, this pigeon. It's a certain pigeon I've just seen as well. This pigeon gets drunk. I forgot his name. It's a um, certain pigeon from South America. South America is a wild stuff. I think it's from South America, but this pigeon is known for eating fermented fruit and falling on his head in front of people. You looked it up? I forgot the name. I was going to. You know what's surprising is that there's a lot of videos about drunk pigeons. I told you. How the hell is this so popular? You can you can start a whole channel with this. I told you. <laughs> I told you. Uh, it's these fruits that they eat they, they get fermented, and these pigeons. Well, I hate to be a stool pigeon, but these pigeons get no pun intended. But these pigeons get messed up, yo. Yeah, put them up there. Some people they they pick them up, help them back. I like pickles. Yeah, I, especially I like pickles. There's a bar that makes their pickle that makes their own pickle. I used to I used to just go there for the pickles, and um, it was Spring Street. Shout out to Spring Street Bar. They used to make these pickles, and it was delicious. Yeah, I'm talking about. They put it in a jar. Hold it, you know, in a couple of days. We're like, they ain't ready yet. You can't get them all the time. But they, but on the farmer's markets, they sell these little pickles, these pickles that look like, these cucumbers that look like pickles. Cucumbers, shout out to cucumbers for stepping your game up. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what to click on. You see what I got here? <clears throat> yeah, that's it. Yeah, the drunk pigeon, right? It's yeah. a, it's a From New Zealand, that's it. Let me see. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's them. The wood pigeon, that's them. They get drunk 24-7. Look, watch it. <laughs> Wait a minute. His face look like he love it, right? He already got a red beak. You know wow. when somebody Yeah, look at Take about that. How they get down. Like, even if you're a hunter, you only want nothing to do with these. Yo. These are remarkable pictures, man. <clears throat> this music sounds like DJ from Guam. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Somebody said they love relish. Shout out to I. I. Relish. Yeah, relish, yeah, relish had pickle in it. My um, my cousin, he make his own relish. You can make your own um tartar sauce, some vegan eggs, pickles, chop it up in there. I didn't even know all of that stuff. You could do a lot of stuff. You could do yourself. <clears throat> yeah, and you put it. We're gonna do the pot, the pot craft. We're gonna do the cooking. Pot oh, craft, man. cooking pot. Well, we went everywhere, man. But but let me say, talking about these musicians, man. Oh man, Angelic Alice. We're gonna when I come there, I'll be there. I'll be there Monday. Oh word? Yeah, I'll be back. No. Nice. Um crazy, right? Alcohol, yeah. Alcoholic alcoholic pigeons. Yeah, but let crazy. me tell you. Don't get it asked up, I know. I know y'all gonna come with the pigeon jokes, yeah. Pigeon is hot. Man, we still got Yo, 117 in the, in the building. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. Um, make sure you hit that subscribe. We over here, we building, we having a good time, man. Like um, button. Make sure y'all hit the like button. Hit the like button. Thank y'all for the super chats. Keep, keep bringing them. <clears throat> bringing some exclusive. True. Shout out to Cap Jones, man. Um, I'll see you in the building, brother. Yeah. Uh, 
music is phenomenal. The last joint, dope. Right, Captron's is on fire lately. Yeah. So that's gonna be it. That's gonna be another level. Um, let's yeah. see. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Um. All right. So let's move to the music, man. All right. Yeah, start with Let's go. It's time for a segment we call Song Promotions. Song Promotions. Yeah. All right. This is the part of the show where we play songs that were submitted to the show. If you're interested in submitting tracks, the link is in the description. Let's go. We've got a few submissions today. So this ought to be good. Oh, shit. 1129. Okay. Almost there. And our first submission is by Oni Dakini. This song is called Run for Cover. Here we go. And on the cool check-in. Center stage putting it on wax. Suckers, I'm here for the payback. Yeah. We're going to do a song that you never heard before. What makes the... turning my life around. No more blowing guys for a pint of vodka for this cowboy. Anybody have anything they want to tell the group for starters? My name's Cracker Boy. I'm an alcoholic. I've been using the 12-step program for about two months now, and I just really like guys. That's great. I was stupid one night. That was dumb, and I'm not going to do it again. Wait, 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 hold on. Cover, boy. You are powerless. Step one is admitting that you are powerless. Humbly ask for forgiveness. Wait, 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 hold on. I don't even care, but, uh, but, 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 uh, I, I, what, what, her, but, you, you, but, 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 I just really like guys. Yeah. 
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the first debate. No, 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 no. Not a chance. If we let that pig do all the talking, we'll never get to... Kill the priest podcast.